Well, will it be third time lucky for Aberdeen? We'll know the answer by five o'clock. So right now, let's go over live to Hamden for this year's Skull Cup final. Good afternoon and welcome to our live and exclusive coverage of the 1989 Skull Cup Final. And joining me here in the studio at Hamden is Andy Gray, who will be analysing today's action. Andy, welcome. Tell me, what kind of match do you think we've got in prospect today? I think like most strangers Aberdeen matches, Jim, it's going to be tremendously competitive. And if, and we're all hoping, if they can conjure up something like the last couple of years, then I think everyone here will be well satisfied with that. Do you think it can even top the last two finals, Andy? Um, they've made it very difficult, the players, to do that. I think if we get something half as good, then uh, I think everyone here will be very pleased. But I think there'll certainly be goals here. I don't see it as one of these nil-nil affairs at all. I'm sure there'll be plenty of goals. Who do you favour, Andy? Let me ask you that, because the Don obviously must be extra keen to win it. Yeah, it's been a few years since Aberdeen have won a trophy and it's been two years in a row that they've lost out here, so they'll be extra keen to win it. But I must favour Rangers, I think, purely because they have more goal threat than Aberdeen at the moment. That's going to be the significant aspect I of the game, so, do you think? Yes. You'd obviously love to be playing out there, would you? Uh, no, at my age, it's a, it would be a dream that would only come true. <laughs> up there. <laughs> You're still playing though. The, <laughs> Vox, the Vauxhall Conference League yesterday, Cheltenham 2, Charlie nil, and you were playing, you scored. An A grey scored. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific Andy, okay. Well, about half an hour ago the teams arrived here at Hamden to prepare for the match. First to arrive was the Rangers team and David Livingston spoke to manager Graeme Souness. But, well, we're all looking forward to obviously, you can never play in enough cup finals. Any nerves in your part? I'm always nervous, yeah. Is it different, for you, thing. different for you as a manager than as a player? Um, I've got the second best job in football, any manager would tell you that. The best job is playing, and um, you're, you're involved anyway as a manager, but playing's the best part. I wish I was playing. Graham, thanks very much, Thank best you. of luck. Thank Bye. You. A few minutes later, the Aberdeen team arrived and manager Alex Smith talked again to David Livingston. How are you doing? All right, Alec. Can you tell us something about your final build-up to the game? Yeah, it's been very good. We've done a wee bit of training this morning out at Abbott Sinch. And it's went fine. Everybody's OK. Ready to go. You seem to be very relaxed yourself. Yeah, well, uh, always before these games, you've got to be relaxed. I mean, there's hundreds of people who would like to be in this position, so I'm just delighted for most people. We don't see too many smiles from you, Alec, but are we going to get that tonight from you? Well, I hope so. Uh, I'm smiling now. I hope I'm smiling at the end of the game. Uh, I hope it's a great game for everybody and uh, we can take the cup back up the road. Alec, thanks very much. Hi, Best David. of luck. Welcome. On arrival, the players went out onto the park to inspect the pitch and Rob McLean spoke to them about their last-minute thoughts and hopes. Ali McCoyst, you've done this once or twice before, to say the least. How are you feeling about the big game? Really looking forward to it, Rob. Um, all the boys are keyed up and uh, the week's build-up's been really good, so uh, we're all keyed up and we're on to go. The bookies are making you strong favourites. Current form points in the Rangers' direction. How do you feel about that? Well, it's not often the bookies get it wrong, so hopefully they're not going to start today. But um, both teams obviously start even. It's a cup final and uh, Aberdeen will come down full of optimism, but it's up to us to, to play on the day. And I think if we play on the day, and hopefully the result will go our way. And you're sticking with this macho rugged look with the cut over the eye and the uh, growth. I say, I don't think for a minute it will scare what I like, but I'll do my best. All the best. Hope it's a good game. Thanks a lot. The Dons have also been out on the park. Rob spoke to Willie Miller. Willie, how are you feeling about the big game? Yeah, fine. It's uh, good to be back again. I always look forward to cup finals, and uh, this is no exception. The bookies don't seem to be giving Aberdeen much of a chance. How do you feel about that? Oh, I don't really uh, worry too much about bookies. Um, uh, we'll leave that to the to the punters. Um, that doesn't concern us. What does concern us is that uh, we put up a good show today and we win the cup. Obviously, keen to reverse the results of the last couple of years. Oh yeah, th they've been great games the last couple of years. Uh, I think everybody that came to the game has enjoyed them. But uh, 
we've been disappointed in that uh, we've lost out twice, so we're looking to reverse that today. I don't want to worry you, but Ali McCoy's looking pretty macho with an attempted beard and a cut over one eye. Ali, is he? Huh? He's usually quite a smooth character, Ali, but I'm sure he'll be as uh, jovial as ever, but uh, let's hope he's not too jovial at the end of the game. Well, let's hope it's a good game. Thanks very much. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> Well, joining our commentator, Jock Brown, today is Ian St. John, and they're both down at trackside. Thank you, Jim, and we can tell you straight away that we now have the two teams for this afternoon's match, Ian, very interesting selections. Ian Ferguson in midfield for Rangers, and Brian Grant preferred a midfield to Brian Irvin, who was expected to play for Aberdeen. Well, let's hope they can play as well as this band behind us. <laughs> why, why is it every time I'm on TV that I don't be, I get a band behind me, you know? But yes, we had the team, and... Uh, Really and truly, today is such an occasion, you know, because we all talk about the other two games I've had. I mean, this one's been billed as, what, great encounters of the third kind. So I hope it lives up to that billing. Uh, it's amazing to think that the goals that get scored here at Hamden in this final between these two teams, when you consider that they've got two class goalkeepers, they've got outstanding defenders, and yet we still get exciting attacking play with, with great goals. We also have this afternoon the youngest player in the field will play for Aberdeen, 18 year old Ian Jess. Very big occasion for a young man. Well, it's a big occasion for him, and we'll have to see how he handles it because, as you know, the atmosphere can be a bit intimidating. But, I mean, you've got experienced players like Charlie Nicholas, for instance. I think a lot depends on Charlie for Aberdeen. You know, he's got to, to look after the younger players, hasn't he? You know, with the, with the experience he's got. Well, another problem, too, for Aberdeen is their last performance is a very disappointing home defeat yes. against Hearts. What do you expect that will have done to the Aberdeen resolve for this afternoon? Well, I think all good teams bounce back from a bad result, and I, and I think Aberdeen will bounce back from that, because I think all week they'll have been saying, come on, we played so badly, we can only do, you know, 100 times better than that. Let's get out there and show our fans who've travelled down that we can play. And I think that will be, you know, the way that they will approach the game. And of what course, about... Rangers are a bad... Both the lads, both teams out of Europe, I mean, Rangers will want to win this very badly as well. Three rest of balance. What about the conditions? Are there a breeze overhead, difficult for goalkeepers? A wee bit blustery, but I mean, the conditions are great underfoot, you know. It'll be maybe difficult for goalkeepers, as you say, but uh, other than that, excellent. And Ian Ferguson back after a spell of injury, will that be a problem for him? Well, you've always got the problem of when you've had an injury and you're coming back for your first game to see if it stands up. If it stands up, fine, you know. I don't think you lose condition just been out for uh, three weeks. And the front two, McCoy's and Johnston quickly against McLeish and Miller. Yeah, well, that's always one to look forward to, isn't it? And, uh, you know, there'll be a lot of attention focused on that. I just hope it's like the other games, it's open, it's attacking, exciting play and great goals. Well, we're all set, Jim. We're going right up to the commentary gantry now. We're looking forward to the match very much indeed. Back to you. <laughs> the lads fighting against the band there. Well, we'll take a break. Join us in a couple of minutes when Andy and I will be taking a look at how both Rangers and Aberdeen made it through to today's final. Hello again. Well, Rangers got to the semi-final and a meeting with Dunfermline. Having seen off our broth in the second round, a 4-0 win there. And then they moved on to meet Morton in the third round at Capolo, a 2-1 win there. Then a fourth round meeting with Hamilton Ackes where two Mark Walters goals and one from Trevor Stephen gave them a 3-0 win. And that then took them through to the semis. Holding off Boyle to find Munro. Played on there by McCoyce for Johnston. Here's McCoyce again for Trevor Stephen. Walters making for the byline. Well, a misunderstanding there. Played back in by Wilkins. Westwater scrambling across his goal. Stephen's inside. Here's Stephen. Now Goff. There's Johnston. A flying header for Rangers second. Here's Gary Stevens. Delicate ball inside. Here's Johnston. There's McCoy. And that was a classic. There's McCoy nodding it on. Tierney had to be careful. Oh, that's great play by Stephen. Here's Morris Johnston. They're queuing up in the middle. McCoy made it. And once again, Johnston plays a vital role in the build-up. No Johnston. Stevens making for the byline. He has Johnston dropping in deep. 
And of course, kept in by Walters. Ian Ferguson. Well, Andy, that night, I mean, a terrific performance by Rangers, but a dreadful one by Dunfermline. They hit Dunfermline so hard so early on. Yeah, it looked like uh, Johnson and McCoy actually clicked that night, and the kind of performance that Graham Souness is demanding from them today. But it's not been the hardest of, of paths through to the final for Rangers. I think they'll be first to admit that. Uh, it's been quite easy for them, but they've steadily got better, Jim, as it's gone on, and culminating in that tremendous semi-final here, when they really clicked, everything worked perfectly for them, and they played probably as well as they can do. Is that the intention, do you think, uh, today, Andy, they'll go out and try and hit Aberdeen very early on? Obviously, they'd like to think they could score three in the first half. Can't really see that happening, but is that the intention, <laughs> to hit them hard early? Yeah, I think they'll go, they'll go looking for a goal early on. I think the way that Rangers, we're having Alan McCoy and Mo Johnson up front, the best way to go about a game is obviously to attack a team. They're two tremendous players, tremendous characters, and they, they both score goals at a prolific rate. And if you're going to use them, then use them properly and get on and get at a team early on. And I would think that Graham Souness will be hoping that one of them can pop the ball in the net early on for Rangers. Curiously though, Andy, the goals haven't been coming for them in the league no. this season. That's true, they've struggled in the league, they've stuttered a bit, but they have a, an affinity with this cup. They like it somehow. Uh, previous two, three years, they've, they've, they've lifted it. So they have an affinity with this cup that they don't want to lose. Uh, and there's something about it. But they haven't stuck it together in the league. You're right there, Jim, for some reason or other. But, I mean, if they can produce a performance like that, then I'm sure that uh, the management and the, and the staff and the supporters here will be happy in Rangers' point of view. All right, and it will so to Aberdeen's path to the final. In the second round, uh, they went to Fir Park Motherwell, where they beat Albion Rovers by two goals to nil. Their third round meeting with Airdrie saw them comfortably through a 4-0 win at Pataudry. Then in the fourth round, they were at home to St Mirren, a 3-1 win there. The Dons in the semis again. Now it's McLeish for Aberdeen. There's Brian Grant, he's found space. Now Cameron with a shooting chance. Yes! Aberdeen take the lead. Ian Cameron. And a smashing goal that mm. there from young Cameron. Of course, who does not feature today after getting concussed recently. But a terrific goal to win a semi-final. Great goal. It? I mean, it, it deserved to win a, a, a semi-final that. And they'll miss him today. There's no doubt about that, Aberdeen. But they've had, they've had a much harder path through to the final than Rangers. There's no doubt about that. Airdrie, St Mirren, and then Celtic here in the semi-final. They've had to work very hard to get there. But in their way, they've scored lots of goals getting here. They're into double figures. Rangers are into double figures. Uh, and Aberdeen will be looking to win, as we said earlier on. They haven't won a trophy for three or four years now, Jim. They've lost the last two Skull Cup finals. They'll be determined to prove it right. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the boy Mason. I played against him a couple of times last year in the reserves. And he looked a class above the rest in the reserve team football. It's great to see him playing today. And I'm going to pay particular interest in him. I see he's a top goal scorer in this competition. And obviously Aberdeen are looking for him to get something. They'll be looking to Andy, I would have thought, for a significant contribution from the likes of Jim Bett in midfield. He's yeah. very important yeah. to them today. Jim's probably had his best start to the season for many a year. Um, he's coming, he's dictating the play from midfield. That is their strength going forward, I feel, today. It'll be their midfield. They're going to rely an awful lot on, on Jim Bett and Robert Connor, who's a tremendously skillful player. But if Rangers are going to worry about Jim Bett, he's an ex-player, he wants to do well against ex-clubs, all players do. And he's the one man that can turn the screw for Aberdeen and win them the game. Theo Schnelders too will be looking to make amends for last uh, yeah. last year's cup final when he gave away. He still he, he still <laughs> says he didn't, but he gave away the early penalty. Good keeper too, isn't he? The best in Scotland. I mean, he was voted uh, last year the, the player of the year in Scotland. That that speaks volumes for how everybody thought about him. Um, there's no doubt he's the best goalkeeper in Scotland at the moment, and Rangers have their work cut out. It's great when you look back and you, you see you've got Alec McLeish and Willie Miller, who I can't believe they're still bloody playing, Jim, I tell you. And here's me sitting up here with you. But you look and you see those two who won't give much away, and you look beyond them and you've got a keeper like Theo Snelders. It's a great base to build upon. And young Jess getting his big chance today. Just a youngster, Alex Smith thinks very, very highly of this young lad. Yeah, I'm a great believer in if you're good enough, you're old enough. Alex Smith believes he's good enough at 18 to stick him in. Put him in the final, the lad may surprise a few people, and I hope he's a good game. Crowd, of course, filling in now today. Mm. Big crowd, yeah. si 60 plus, it's filling up outside. Tremendous atmosphere, we can even feel it in here, can't we? Look at that, packed up there, isn't it? F fantastic crowd, family enclosure too, a big family day because Mums and dads, there's all the kids out. That's terrific to see, Andy. It's good it? to see. I mean, that, that's that's the one thing that that was probably been missing in our game over the last ten years is is getting the mums and dads and the kids to come together. And there in that shot, we see families here. It's brilliant. And that's lovely. But which is nice to Rangers and Aberdeen standing yeah. side by side. Well, let's now go to Jock Brown, and alongside him, of course, is Ian St John.
Thank you, Jim. Yes, back in, up in the commentary position and all set for the big match. The atmosphere building up beautifully now and the anticipation of the crowd quite remarkable. And as you say, a real atmosphere to savour here at Handel this afternoon. The family atmosphere looking forward to a tremendous match and the pitch looking, as you can see, in immaculate condition. Ian, good place to be this afternoon. Oh, yes, of course. I mean, uh... I just think about it, I could have been sitting at home and watching uh, Manchester City and Aston Villa. Uh, so I'm obviously delighted to be here because uh, the Skull Cup final has proved to be a great competition, job. And I, I keep saying to people down in England, you know, that it's the way the competition is run, you know, the, it's all about goals, it's all about, you know, early games, finish, one matches. And the whole thing is, I think, has culminated in this final here. And it's a, it's a marvellous competition. And the crowd now will erupt in just one second because the ball boys have emerged down below us here and the teams will be following very shortly indeed. Rangers fans there, now some Aberdeen supporters, 20,000 down from Granite City this afternoon. They'll be hoping that they can overcome the last couple of disappointments in the last two years. So the ball boys have sold as a dummy somewhat, they've come out a little bit ahead of the players. Players should be led out by the respective managers. Remember that Graham Sinners and Walter Smith of Rangers are not allowed in the dugout for this match after their van. They have to watch the match from the stand. There's the director's box with David Murray right in the middle of the stand there. The seats behind there are for Graham Sinners and Walter Smith. So let's see if they're allowed to come out. Well, there's one way to watch the match television set I think operating as well as the view over the ground so that certainly does if you've any doubts about whether we're live or not this afternoon in six minutes until the kickoff 63,000 people inside the stadium and the weather becoming a little bit kinder now it was rather cold and grisly earlier on but the sun has come out and it really looks a splendid spectacle now so there's a packed main south stand here at Hamden players will emerge from the tunnel at the foot of that the band striking up now to welcome the players out and you can see the exuberance in the terraces just what you would expect for a cup final the Rangers fans on the west terracing trying to go to our left the Aberdeen fans on the east to the right there's a Warwick Band. So the managers now are ready to bring their teams out. Alex Smith on the left for Aberdeen with Graham Sinners. These two, I can tell you, are very good friends. Although that will be forgotten for the next hour and a half or so. Players ready to come out. A chat there going on between Willie Miller and Terry Butcher. Tense cup final occasion. Graham Sinners hasn't tasted Skull Cup defeat as the Rangers manager. Quite a remarkable record. They won the trophy three times in a row during the Sinners reign. And Sinners looks very relaxed. So too does Alex Smith as the players emerge to a tremendous reception. Charlie Nicholas going out. Alex behind him. Ian Jess behind Alec McLeish. Brian Grant bringing up the rear, substitutes following out. Brian Irvin and uh, Willem van der Aert for Aberdeen. John Brown and Ian McCall for Rangers. So the players lining up now for the introductions before the match. President of the Scottish Football League, Jack Stephen of Clyde Bank, leading out Mr. John McKenzie, who is the managing director of Mallow Brewery Company Limited. The sponsors. Jim Farry, the league secondary, also at the back. So the officials wasting no time about these introductions. They appreciate the players are very anxious to get on with things. And through to the match officials. George Smith in the middle from Edinburgh, handling his fourth major final. He's at two Scottish Cup finals. This is his second Skull Cup final in a row. He was in charge in that marvellous match a year ago, which Rangers won by three goals to two. Linesman this afternoon, Mr. Bossett from Glasgow, Mr. Fox from Goldston. So 
think you can take it the players' minds really are on the match rather than on the introductions. Graham Sinis having a few words along the line with his players. Alex Smith savouring the occasion. He was the manager of St Nunn when they won the Scottish Cup in 1987 with Ian Ferguson now as Rangers the scorer over the winning goal. Well, the teams now break. So there's the Rangers lineup. All the questions answered now. Ian McCall and John Brown are on the bench. Ian Ferguson winning number eight will play in midfield. So the team on very familiar lines. Mark Walters also fit to play wide on the left in the front two. Ali McCoy and Mo Johnston. And there's Ali McCoy. He's a record breaker in the Skull Cup so far. He leads with five goals in the competition. That will get him a Caribbean holiday if it stays that way. And there's his record. Nine goals this season in all. And looking for his sixth Skull Cup winner's medal. And Ian Ferguson must have done something of a gamble for Ranger this afternoon. He hasn't played since being injured about three weeks ago. 23 year old with three caps. There's that transfer fee when he came to Rangers from St. Martin nearly two years ago. Well, Aberdeen manager Alex Smith had lots of considerations about his lineup when he's left Brian Irvin alongside Willem van der Aert on the bench. Brian Grant wears number four to play in the middle of the field alongside Tim Betts, Paul Mason and Robert Connor and young Ian Jess is selected to play up front. So there's Charlie Nicholas. So he is anxious to break his scoring duck. He hasn't scored this season at all, which is really quite remarkable. And he did score in a League Cup final way back in 1981 for Celtic. Nicholas, a key man up front, and his striking partner this afternoon, the youngest player on the field. He was signed for Rangers before being released and then going up to Aberdeen. 18 years old, he won't be 19 until December, starting only his eighth first team match. The referee, one of Scotland's most experienced officials, 46 year old civil servant from Edinburgh, George Smith, who handled last year's final with such calmness and authority. And he was in charge of the Celtic Rangers Cup final of 1980 and the Celtic and the United final of 1988. So a very experienced match official. So the opening stage of the match, sure to be crucial. Aberdeen still smarting after that 3-1 defeat against Aberdeen in the league eight days ago. That's Pitodre. And Rangers... Coming to this match after a good victory against Dundee United in the league. So a tremendous build-up of noise around Hamden. 63,000 people waiting for referee George Smith to get the 44th League Cup final underway. So a calm check around the stadium. The referee checks with his linesman. It's Aberdeen who'll start the match. And it's back with Brian Grant. Johnston making a challenge. Just a bit of involvement here for Chris Woods. He'll relish this early touch of the ball after his shoulder injuries earlier in the season. Just eight matches so far for Rangers. Please going up with Johnston. Here's David Robertson. Nicholas through the middle on his own for the moment. Supported there by Mason. Goff's interception. There's Ferguson and Walters. Ferguson, Walshing being involved very early on, linking here with Walters. McCoy sends it back, there's Stuart Munro. Wilkins to Goff. Wilkins and Ferguson are the central midfield players for Rangers. Stephen on the right, Walters on the left. And Jim Bett lays it back calmly to Alec McLeish. Chris Nelders calling for a touch of the ball. Goalkeeper's always anxious to get that first touch. Barry McLeish calming things down at the back for Aberdeen. So Gary Stevens wins that high ball, but he's been given a free kick for the challenge made by young Ian Jess. Oh man, with a very bright future in the game, but what a major occasion this is from a day you'll never forget Goff plays it forward there's Johnston on the layoff he was taken late by Willie Miller 
Well, the referee keeping a very tight grip on things because he could have allowed the advantage rule. And Willie Miller's little outburst there being picked up by the referee. Well, referee George Smith stamping his authority in the match very early on. And it's Wilkie to the free kick. Goff has gone forward, so has Butcher. It's Johnston who gets the touch. And behind for the Aberdeen goalkeeper. All a bit tense and nervous early on here. Well, both teams are killing each other out at this particular stage, but I think Rangers, you know, have got to think of other ways of getting the ball up to McCoy and Johnson other than knocking long balls, which I have seen them do this season, and I don't think it's a good play at all. I think they've got to play through midfield and then give the boys a better service. Willie Malone across the bows of McCoy. Here's Mason. Nicholas with a return pass. He was taken late by Goff. Very hefty challenge there on Charlie Nicholas by Richard Goff after he released a very fine pass to Jim Bett. Well, this is certainly not messing about, that's for sure. There's Nicholas laying off the pass and taking that thumping challenge late from Goff. Well, we've now seen Mo Johnston take a hefty blow from Willie Miller. Now it's Nicholas' turn from Richard Goff. Is this an indication of what we're about to see in? Well, that always happens in the game, you know, there's a little tip for tat, you know, one of your forwards gets a bang, so a big defender at the other end has a, a goal at the opposing forward. I hope the, the game doesn't uh, degenerate into a, a kicking match, because the stage is not about that, is it? It's about playing football, playing entertaining stuff today. Well, they're having in physio, Davey Well, they've been given plenty of time by the referee to uh, attend to Charlie Nicholas, perhaps the referee has in mind that a little bit of a delay now might not do any harm to calm things down out there. And of course, certainly is used to hefty treatment, but he didn't welcome that, that's for sure. The free kick being taken by McLeish. And Chris Woods calling to Gary Stevens to leave that to him. And no misunderstanding there. Johnson getting up well again. Here's Walters. Trying to take on McKinney. And there will be a free kick. A bit of obstruction there by McKinney. Trying to prevent Walters getting off his mark. So another opportunity for the Rangers centre defenders, Terry Butcher and Richard Goff, to put their way into the box. Here's Walters. Headed away by Connor. Wilkins retrieves it. Could be got one for Stephen. No room at all the time. He knew the challenge was coming in from Robert Connor. And he's quite happy to take this throw. Gary Stevens to Wilkins. Well done by Miller. Good dummy that by Bet. Here's Mason. Looking for a run from McKimmy on the right. He was impeded surely by Walters. No, well, the referee saw nothing wrong with that. Well, Mason certainly was obstructed there by Ian Ferguson. Three kicks already taken. Made wide right by Connor for Robertson. Good running by David Robertson. He's away from Stevens. Here's Jess. Running against Gary Stevens. Good play by Wilkins and by Steven. Johnston using Wilkins again. The point of attack switch to the left by Gary Stevens for Butcher. And of course, had space, had he been able to control that. There's Connor now for Aberdeen. Great play by Jess. Well, that'll give him a great boost to his confidence. Long ball forward from Bett. And fine header by Richard Bull. Very encouraging bit of play that from Ian Jensen. Looks uh, a talented young boy. I hope he settles into the game well and, and we see his talents today. It is a big occasion for him, but uh, I mean, he's got some very good players around him. And Aberdeen play good football, you know, they play good studied football, so he should get plenty of service. David Robertson stepping in. Getting off that pass intended for Johnston.
referee wants the throw taken, several yards for the back. Robertson with the header. The Rangers continuing to press on the right flank. Gary Stevens capable of a long throw. Butcher has gone into the box. Target there was Butcher, there he goes. And Walters almost get in there. Well, the Aberdeen players upset about that challenge by Walters, but Stuart McKimmy here is almost penalised for waiting for the ball to reach him. Just look at this, and Walters and Wazoo stepped in. That to be turned away by McLeish. Well, that could have been costly for Aberdeen. Well taken by Stephen. Towards Wilkins, that was well read by Bent, and a fine pass. There's Nicholas. Trying to play that through the legs of Stevens. The layoff from McCoy is taken to the back by Willie Miller. The free kick to Rangers. Miller still there waiting for the play to settle down. And Lee Smith is doing all he can to ensure that things remain calm out there. McCoy is looking for space. It's Gary Stevens with the free kick. Bringing in the low towards McCoy. Fine piece of play that. The rehearsed move. Richard Goff with the layoff. Trying to extend the ball to McCoy. Well, Rangers, uh, obviously, with the big fellas up there, normally knock the ball high. so. They've come up with a little idea and uh, almost worked for them. A good inventive play from the set piece. There's Walters challenging the back by McKimmy. Good shot tackle that by Stuart Munro. <laughs> McKimmy. Touched on there by Nicholas, too far ahead of Jess. ball from Stevens. See, that's what I was talking about, Jock. I really do think that that's just a wasted ball. And the Rangers, you know, every time I see them, I see so many balls played from way inside their own half, just not right through, and it run, runs through the goalkeeper. I do believe they've got to find the midfield players, and Wilkins would want to take it because that's the kind of player he is, and I think they've got to play through that midfield. So fast back there from Stuart Munro. Getting up ahead of McLeish, there's David Robertson. Walters holding off McKimmy. Paul Mason wins it for Aberdeen. Now Nicholas coming deep. And a difficult ball there to bet, who was fouled by Ferguson. Good kick already taken by Aberdeen, across it goes to David Robertson. Here's Jess, that's good control. Good tackle by Goff. Now Wilkins. Well read by Connor. Wilkins involved again. Playing with lots of energy and enthusiasm in midfield, Ray Wilkins. Speculation about his Rangers career coming to an end. And he's certainly got his mind on the job this afternoon. There's Goff. Appearance by Miller. Here's Jess. That's good play. Here's Jim Bett. Running at the Rangers defence. Looking for a free kick, he thought he was impeded there by Butcher. The referee had a very good view of that and disagreed. Bent trying to use his acceleration from midfield, he had no support. Well, that's great play by Walter, he's away from McKimmy. Johnston and McCoy's way in the middle, Trevor Stephen arriving late. There's McCoy, well tackled by McLeish. Superb piece of defending there by McLeish. And we know they're up with that. Interception to concede the throw to Aberdeen. But Mark Walters looks to be on form this afternoon, and uh, he's been giving McKinney a bit of trouble down that side. And I think if Rangers, you know, can get the ball out to him, we, we can see something happening from that left wing.
for the throw on the far side taken by Jim Betts for Aberdeen this is McLeish and Robertson Connor has come to the left touch line ahead of Robertson intended for Nicholas one by Ferguson for Wilkins that's good play at a midfield from Rangers looking for Mo Johnston with the pass and a bit of interplay there of all Wilkins and Stephen looking promising for Rangers for a moment Marking is very tight, there's not much on for Connor. It's one for Mason to chase with Monroe. Good defending there by Stuart Monroe. He's clearly frustrated that the throw has gone to Aberdeen. Now be a very interesting tussle over on the far side, Paul Mason and Stuart Monroe. There's McKimmy with a throw. Nicholas shows himself inside. Here's Johnston now for Rangers. And some service there to Walters. Boyce makes the run. The covering player is Willie Miller. And Miller turned out behind for the corner kick before he was bumped there by McCoy. He clearly thinks it was a foul, but the referee says the corner kick it is. It looks to me as if the, the referee and Willie Miller have fallen out somewhat because that looked uh, a foul against McCoy as far as I was concerned. No, I don't know about that. The inner felt that the player played the ball first and went for the corner. An inevitable collision after that. And here's the corner from Trevor Stephen. Here's Walters. Stephen accepts another corner kick. Very important phase in the match as Rangers press for the opener. Richard Goff and Terry Butcher and Mr. Things in the box. And Johnston going up unchallenged at the far post. Well, the angle was very tight indeed, but question marks here. Theo Stelders decided to leave that and Johnston headed against the post. Well, Stuart McKimmy was the marker again, and that's uh, McKimmy's been caught at both posts. And. Uh, well done, Mo Johnson. I mean, he really has got spring heels a little fella. There's Willie Miller. Mo Johnston causing problems again for the Aberdeen defence. The police building from the back. Using Willie Miller. That's intended for Mason, and good goalkeeping there by Woods. Mason testing the pace of Monroe. The clock says 15 minutes and the score sheet remains blank. Rangers having more pressure in that opening spell. Here goes Walters again. Looks very much in the mood. The throw taken quickly. Here's Johnston. Trying to get away from Miller. Wilkins available again. Head across there by Grant towards Nicholas. That's great play by David Robertson. Fine piece of acceleration there. Dan Lakers putting pressure on Butcher, but Wilkins comes to the skipper's aid. This is Stephen. Good running there by Gary Stevens. David Robertson's with him. And the corner kick has been given. The linesman gave that immediately. David Robertson looked upset about it. So did Robert Connor. Two very quick players indeed. David Robertson and Gary Stevens going for that ball. So it's Butcher again. Far corner of the box this time. Goff is on the near post. Stephen with the outswinger. Right away by Jess. There's no one in that gap for Aberdeen. Gary Stevens returns it looking for Butcher or Goff. It was Goff he found. And it's behind 
from an Aberdeen goalkeeper. Well, Rangers having the ball through the pressure, Ian, but uh, not showing too many signs of breaking through. No, we've had a uh, couple of escapes here <coughs> at both times at the far post, but uh, other than that, you know, I think the Aberdeen boys are handling the pressure well. Here's Ian Ferguson. Stevens coming from the right. The pass comes off Connor. There's Gary Stevens with the throw. Boy, so that flick on. The angle wasn't right for Johnston. So Aberdeen still really to be seen in an attacking sense in the match. They've looked very resilient at the back and busy in midfield, but still very few chances for Charlie Nicholas and Ian Jess up front to demonstrate the talent. Goff with the interception in the air. Robertson playing it wide, looking for Mason. Here's Tim Bett. Switching play now. Inviting teammates to make space. Here's McKimmy and Mason. Tim Bett playing it forward, but Robert Connor was caught on his heels when that pass was released. Good touch on again by McCoyst. Moore going across in front of Johnston. Wilkins to Stephen. Now Stevens. Had quite enough space to get away from Ian Jess. If he's coming to offer himself for the throw. Nicholas very deep. Here's McLeish. Aberdeen trying to have a three-pronged attack whenever they have possession with Jess on the left, Nicholas in the middle and Mason on the right. Great header on by Johnston to McCoy. Here's Walter. Steven is free on the right. Interception was made by Connor, but he used an arm. And the referee is going to take action against Robert Connor. Well, it's the first booking of the match for the Aberdeen number 10. Promising move this from Rangers. Johnston, McCoy's, and then Walters. The Walters pass, which was stopped there by the right arm of Connor. Well, that's it. That's very harsh. As far as I'm concerned, Connor's had his back to the ball and then he was running away. And the ball hit him uh, on his arm. I think that's a very, very harsh decision by the referee. Well, certainly. Well, that will feel a bit unfortunate there. Well, two hefty tackles have gone in. There's been no yellow card for that, but a technical infringement. There's Johnston, cleared by McLeish. Johnston's offside, taken there late by Miller. The whistle had gone, and Johnston making light of that, but it wasn't half a hefty tackle from Miller. Well, Jim Bett, if that ball had gone in the net, Jim Bett would have been held responsible there because he tried to be very clever on the edge of his own box, you know. In a situation like that, you've just got to get it away. And David Robertson. Good play again by Jess, but he's hustled there by Wilkins. The tackle on the back is penalised. It's a free kick to Aberdeen. Well, the first touch of young Ian Jess is very impressive, isn't it? Well, it was delightful on it when he killed the ball, Tony was on his way and uh, you know I didn't think that Wilkins had done anything wrong either I thought he slid in got the ball I think a referee at this particular point has been a little bit petty well, of course, the referee giving a free kick to Aberdeen here's Jim Bett Stevens came to meet him Grant now to Connor the looping cross Goff doing well as he slipped to get his head to the ball And a free kick given to Aberdeen. The referee indicating foot up in a challenge there. Well, Ian Ferguson protesting bitterly about that. The referee will have a word with him, and this will end up in a marvellous opportunity for Aberdeen. But that infringement not at all clear. The referee spotted it instantly, and he indicated it was dangerous play with a foot being raised too high. 
So we'll see here what the infringement was. There was Ian Ferguson. They certainly appear to be trying to play the ball. That's his complaint. But the referee has given the free kick. And an opportunity for a rehearsed move from Aberdeen. Giving the ball back the full 10 yards. Nichols is there. Connor is there. Bet is there. All of them have scored from free kicks outside the box. There's Connor. Lofting it in. The header from Mason. Aberdeen on the head. 22 minutes of the first half gone. Paul Mason, the Aberdeen leading goal scorer, gives Aberdeen the lead. The ball breaking off the wall. A delightful ball in there from Connor. Mason getting up there with Monroe. Woods was caught in no man's land. And that's what has given Aberdeen the lead. Paul Mason's seventh goal of the season. Woods came and stopped. Left himself stranded. And Mason took full advantage. Well done, young Paul Mason, but uh, you have to say that with two defending by Rangers, I thought the goalkeeper might have come all the way and had a punch at it. Monroe was caught in his heels, and Mason just got a couple of inches above him to nod it in. So there's the score line, Aberdeen in the lead, Paul Mason the scorer, and that would certainly give a big travelling support from Liverpool. What a pleasure because Paul Mason has a busload of fans up from his hometown of Liverpool to support him this afternoon. And they've seen him give his team the lead midway through the first half. Well, Aberdeen scarcely seen an attacking sense in the match up till that point. Made that attack count, and Rangers, of course, will be feeling even more aggrieved about the free kick decision against Ian Ferguson. Certainly developing into yet another humbling, Ian. Well, it's all set up now, you know. That's. Uh... The first of the goals of the afternoon, and we'll the see if Rangers can uh, fight back, get on terms. The Aberdeen fans delighted, certainly entitled to be. First glimpse of goal of the match for Aberdeen, and Paul Mason took full advantage. So, Charlie Nicholas, as soon as team take the lead, he's still looking at his first goal of the season. And certainly a big occasion player. There's Jim Bett. No Grant. Into the gap there for Jess. And Richard Goff went all the way with him. And Goff thought the ball had carried over for the goal kick. And Lensman on the spot disagreed. Cleared by McKimmy. McKimmy will certainly be thoroughly relieved because he's been involved in a couple of bits of hesitation inside his own box which have not yet been punished and he's also watched Paul Mason score the open. Bet goes down, hustled by Johnston, here's Connor. Now Nicholas, tackled well by Goff. Connor hustling forward again and wins the throw off Stevens. Here's Jess, Bet back to Grant, on the far side McKinney. There's Mason with a return pass, these two developing a great understanding, McKinney and Mason on the right for Aberdeen. And a bit of carelessness there from Ian Ferguson on the pass back. Corner kick it is to Aberdeen. So Wilkins on the post, on one post, Steven on the other. Every Rangers player in the penalty area to defend. Here's Alec McLeish. Scored once already this season. With a header. McLeish up well again. Played away by Johnston. Here's Grant. Delightful little chip. Dumped away by Butcher. Here's Bet. Aberdeen trying to keep the pressure on. McKimmy lofting it in. Barry Stevens should be able to deal with this. And Mo Johnston has found space. Holds off Jim Betts. 
Ferguson to Wilkins, what a superb match this is turning out to be once again. Here's Grant, in the middle of the field was Mason, Ferguson made the challenge, a good one, and Rose sends it back. Good play from Gary Stevens. The boys come short for the pass, couldn't control it. Well, Aberdeen undoubtedly have had the start they wanted very badly indeed. Get themselves back on the rails, They're looking to get in front early on, they've managed that. And they've carried lots of menace. On what occasion when they managed to get forward. First of the ball, chase for Jess with Butcher. Calm defending by Butcher. Head flip on from the guys, goes straight to David Robertson. It's not giving young Ian Jess much chance to capitalise up front. Guys still in play with Walters. Great running by Monroe. Coyce, Johnston, Stephen all up in support. Ian Ferguson coming late. There's Monroe. Came off Billy Miller and Snell Dudley able to keep the ball in play. Billy Miller with the player intercepting that shot from Monroe, but some fine play by Rangers on the left. Walters was the player who released Stuart Monroe. He came into his weaker foot, the right, saw the chance for the shot at goal, and Miller then off for Aberdeen. Well, I think Aberdeen have got Rangers a bit rattled now, and when, when I'm looking at Rangers and wondering how they're going to create a goal here, because there are certain players in the team really not been in the game today. The game just for Aberdeen, linking with Mason. Back it goes to Bet. That's intended for Connor, but it with too much power. I was thinking about uh, Trevor Stephen out here on the right right hand side, you know. I mean, Trevor now is just playing in a, a role in the halfway line. And he's not getting forward at all, John. I mean, I used to watch this young lad where he could get onto the byline, it crosses him. He's not doing anything like that at all now. The boys battling hard again in the air with McLeish. There's Willie Miller. There it goes, Robertson. No real prospect of Jess reaching that with Butcher coming in behind him. Good play by Johnston. Certainly not point one thing as far as effort's concerned. Here's a chance for Stephen to take on Robertson. Well, he seemed to lack some confidence there, Ian. Well, that's what I'm saying to you now. I mean, that's about as far forward as he's got in this particular match with the ball. Now, Trevor Stephen, when, when he was really in his prime and playing well there, would have gone straight and attacked the fullback, got inside the box and cut one back. Here's Stephen again for Rangers, in the middle of the field this time, that's sent across for McCoist. Walters has space coming from a deep position, linking with Stephen. McKinney's quickly across, now bet. Thank you for Nicholas, he's challenged quickly by Goff. Butcher. Going for the high ball forward. Here's Paul Mason. Now Nicholas. Looking for the run made by Betts. And Monroe did well for Rangers. But there is more variety about the Aberdeen attacking moves. Well, more ideas. You know, the Rangers again. Terry Butcher gets it, knocks it 50 yards. You know, which is easiest pie for the defenders down there. For the Aberdeen defenders. So, as I say, Rangers have got to get a bit more variety in their attacks. Conlon has done a good job so far for Aberdeen, a vital role in the only goal of the match so far, and now helping in defence. Wilkins across to Stevens. Johnston has come wide on the right. Good dummy by Goff, he's gone forward to link with the attack. Wilkins has to go back. 
complaining to Trevor Stevens on the right wing was vacated there. He was looking to play a pass into that area and there was no one around. Stephen had gone for a wonder across field for the moment. Good header again by Johnston. Here's Gary Stevens. Back it goes to Wilkins. Now Trevor Stephen again. Gary Stevens. Trevor Stephen, there's Wilkins. William Miller at full stretch. Felt on its way by Mason, and here's Bet stepping away from Ian Ferguson. So confident and composed. Now Mason. He was well tackled by Butcher. That sends it long, but that's not the kind of service Charlie Nicholas relishes. Charlie had a look at that one and decided not to go for it. Actually, it would have been a good ball for, say, Mason or Jess, if uh, not for Charlie. Nicholas defending passes to his feet. And this time the foul is against McCoist, using an elbow in the challenge with Alec McLeish. Well, they're having a rare old tussle, these two international teammates, McCoist and McLeish. So McLeish himself will take this free kick. Came off the head of Stephen. Ian McCall and John Brown, the Rangers subs, running past Connor there to warm up. John stood into the path of Ian Ferguson. That's a good ball to McCoyst. Now Walters. Ferguson has continued the run. McCoyst also is up. And Grant has done a good job so far on Walters, slowing down his progress. Wilkins and Aberdeen now everyone back to face the ball. Walters will cross. McCoy's backing into Willie Miller. The referee has given a penalty kick. Well, that is quite remarkable. Quite remarkable. Let's see this again. The ball chipped in. Now watch McCoy's backing in all the way to Willie Miller. Miller trying to play the ball, being pushed back all the time. Down goes McCoy. And the referee sees that. As a penalty kick. Well, if the referee sees it as a penalty, certainly I don't. I mean, you, you're right enough about backing in. He is sitting back in into Willie Miller. But watch him there, he'll just fall down. I mean, Miller's feet don't get anywhere near McCoy's feet, and he just fell down. That was a, a very, very innocuous thing there. I mean, why, why do referees give penalty kicks for that? Well, not only is he giving a penalty kick, he's also going to take action here. One of the Aberdeen players has gone too far in his protest. It looks like Alec McLeish. Well, is clearly irate about that. Look at the look of frustration on his face. Well, I don't really have to express some sympathy there for Aberdeen. It looked to me as though the referee was deceived totally by McCoyst in the box. There's Alec McCoyst. And a penalty kick for Rangers. Mark Walters has a 100% record this season from the spot. He's scored two out of two. So he's entrusted with the task of bringing Rangers back to level terms. And if he's insisting that all players stay out of the box, here goes Walters against Nervous. Rangers are back on level terms. 35 minutes gone. The beautifully taken penalty kick by Mark Walters, sending Snelders the wrong way, leaving him helpless. Well, penalties can scarcely be taken better than that. And Rangers are right back now on level terms. Mark Walters, the scorer, it's his fifth goal of the season. He's stopped on the penalty spot out of three. And we can be sure Aberdeen will be harboring a grievance about that. All the Rangers fans coming to life. There is the scoreline. About nine minutes remaining in the first half. Rangers won, Aberdeen won. As the Rangers fans now, we've had some reason to cheer. Here's Nicholas. 
Ferguson straight into Ferguson. Walker with a long ball forward, off goes McCoyst. Holds it up. Still needs support inside, there's Johnston calling for the ball. Off the post, back to Stevens. And Willie Miller hooks the ball to safety. Oh, corner kick on the far side and Aberdeen suddenly looking ragged in the back. There was McCoy twisting and turning. Johnston called for the ball. A fine effort off the junction of the post and the crossbar. Stevens then had a great chance. He couldn't find the net either. The clever Steven with the in swinger. Off at the near post. Done away there by Brian Grant. It'll be another corner kick to Rangers. Oh, some problems behind the goal there. Fans being released there. There's a fence around the stadium, but gates there to allow fans to be released. And there's one fan who won't see much more of the match. Corner kick taken by Trevor Stephen, and that's behind for the goal kick. Well, totally relentless action once again in the Skull Cup final. And Aberdeen will have to regroup themselves. They've clearly been rattled by that penalty award. Well, I, I'm sure that, I mean, they were mentally stunned by that. And uh, Rangers almost caught them on the hop. And it was a great move, a great combined move by McCoy and Johnson. They almost got another one. But uh, the Aberdeen boys have got to, you know, get their act together again, concentrate the match, and don't uh, lose another goal, certainly not before half time, that's for sure. Wilkins plays it back, here's Wilkins. Now well, Stuart Munro. Stephen to Wilkins. Wilkins playing the first time cross. McLeish with an accurate clearance, picking up Mason on the right. Green just picking up all the loose balls at the moment. Here's Munro. Running straight into Grant. Picked up by Nicholas in the middle of the field is Beck. Very quick with the ball, his feet, Jim Ben. Look at this. Here's Jess. Stepping away from Ferguson. Over on the far side is Mason. Taking on Monroe, linking with Nicholas. Good play from Aberdeen. Down goes Mason. And the referee's given a goal kick this time. And Aberdeen, of course, now looking for a penalty kick when any of their players go down in the box. Here was Paul Mason playing it inside to Nicholas. Now Mason didn't quite control the ball correctly. And he did certainly seem to be hustled there by Stuart Munro. And that certainly might have been as good an award as the last one. Well, if, you, if you're going to give a, a penalty for Rangers, you've got to give one for Aberdeen for that. There's well, Robertson lofting it forward. Mason gives chase. Well, an ungainly clearance there by Stuart Munro. Five minutes remaining in a hectic first half. The score is still level at one goal apiece. This jersey was held there. The jersey was held by Goff. Free kick to Aberdeen. Uh, they've already shown how dangerous they are from these set pieces around the box. Another opportunity presents itself now, and Willie Miller is there to take advantage with Alec McLeish. Marked by Butcher, right to the far post it goes and Goff helps it on. Here's David Robertson. Well, they appear to be caught in two minds there, whether they let that ball run and accept the throw or keep it in play. In the end, he gave possession to Rangers. Bit of pushing there and a free kick to Rangers. It's a golf for the free kick. Well won by Robertson. Nicholas playing into space. The first player there is McKimmy, despite being fouled there all the way by Walters. There'll be trouble here for Walters. Well, McKimmy looked to be more alert. He was sharp up to the ball. And then Walters tried to equalise things with this foul, using his right arm principally to 
give that free kick. And a booking it will be of Mark Walters. And a long lecture there, and Mark Walters still has plenty to say, perhaps suggesting it's his first foul of the match, but nevertheless, he's booked. McLeish now with this free kick. That goes Robertson. Golf heading clear. Ryan Grant is there. Controlled there by Ian Jess. He's on the turn. Rangers defenders appealing for handball. But Jess certainly doesn't look out of place in this company, that's for sure. Controlling the ball there, turning, looking for the shooting chance, keeping it low and just wide of the post. Looking for space, showing good awareness there. He knew where the goal was, just missed the target. A free kick against Alec McLeish for the challenge on Johnston. Golf for the free kick. Ish winning it in commanding fashion. Back with Gary Stevens. The face of the crossbar. What an incredible shot that was from Stevens. Rangers still pressing forward toward the half-time whistle. Looking for the lead. William Ellis header. There's McKimmy. And Mason inside for Grant. Grant still holding possession up for Mason. Down goes Mason. The culprit was Walters. Booked a moment to go. And guilty of a rash tackle there, but how close Rangers came with that incredible effort from Gary Stevens. Look at this. The speed beat Snell does it, came right off the face of the crossbar and came right out to the 18-yard line. Well, Richard Goff is injured. And back with the free kick to Aberdeen for the foul committed by Mark Walters. Richard Goff getting treatment. And referee Smith scares this, had to work harder than he has in the last 45 minutes. So listening to complaints, I think, from Goff and Butcher. Well, what a game it's turning out to be, Jock. I mean, already we've, we've had a goal apiece. We've had Rangers hitting the bar twice. Mo Johnson and, uh, and Gary Stevens. I mean, there was trem tremendous power in this shot. Look at that, he must be all of 30 yards. Dear me. <laughs> but let's not yeah. forget, of course, that uh, Aberdeen had the woodwork as well at the other end. So, I mean, we we've had uh, plenty of goal-mouth action. The Wizard Goff with some damage right on the forehead there, where he will do most of his heading. So that could be a problem. Might need some protection at half-time. So Phil Borsma, the Rangers trainer, still on the field. And he is now being spoken to also by referee Smith. So he's being invited to leave and some alacrity. So we're now into time, added on for stoppages at the end of this incredible first half. There's Alec McLeish with the free kick. Now Connor. Then Robertson going forward to use his ability in the air. That's gone straight through to Woods. Well, we really wondered if the last two finals could be emulated this afternoon, but it looks very much as though we're seeing a third in succession. Similar interest, entertainment and quality. There's David Robertson. Headed by Miller. There's Ferguson looking for Walters. A stumble there as he went to the ball with McKimmy. Here's Paul Mason. Butcher intercepts easily, that pass intended for Nicholas. In goes Willie Miller. But the half-time whistle has gone before that challenge was made. Rangers and Aberdeen tied at one apiece. And we'll be right back after this break.
Well, welcome back to Hampden Park. 1-1 one, one at half-time. Andy Gray and I are literally out of breath. What a first half, Andy. Well, we wondered if, we, if they could do it again. And uh, by heck, they're certainly serving up another showpiece here. Magnificent stuff. And yet both teams have scored when the other team was on top. And sure. Rangers started for 20 minutes as if they were going to steamroll Aberdeen. And Aberdeen got the goal. Kept in control of the game for 10 minutes and then Rangers scored when Aberdeen had control of the game. But it's been, it's been fabulous stuff. From well, let's, let's look at some of the key incidents then from the first half, Andy. Obviously, Mo Johnson, a terrific first half he put in, and this yeah. header here. He gets up at the corner at, at the back post for a free header, Morris, and uh, I think the angle was probably a bit too tight for him there. But I mean, Aberdeen would certainly question the marking here. I mean, he swings over a good ball, a very difficult angle. I mean, perhaps he's thinking in hindsight, maybe he could have knocked him back across the face of the goal. And of course, what did Aberdeen do, Andy? They go up <laughs> the other end of the, the park and, and score. We were just saying, actually, that when they got the free kick as well, Jim, it looked like they made a bit of a hash of it, but Robert Connor, very alert. And I think Chris Woods, um, you know, questions got to be asked about his critical, Yeah, I think it's one of them. If Chris had stayed on his line, he probably would have picked the header up, no problem. But Phil Marks to Paul Mason, we, we mentioned him earlier on before the game started. And he gets a great little header in there, uh, and Chris Woods caught in no man's land. There it is again. Yeah. I mean, uh, Connor did well, playing it in as quickly as he could, yeah. but. Chris Wood certainly questions must be asked yeah, there. So 1-0 at that stage and the Dons came to life then because they really took the game right. to Rangers. But Rangers, of course, up the other end and they got the penalty kick award. <laughs> now, obviously, Willie Miller extremely displeased about this. It was, we didn't have a very good view of it. Uh, I mean, I didn't think at the time it was a penalty. Nothing I've seen there makes me think it was a penalty. And you can, I think we can see there why Aberdeen was so incensed. I mean, Ali's done what all strikers should do, is back in, try and get the ball down. And Willie's just stopped and getting the goal. It looks like Ali's gone over. Um, but these are the kind of things that change cup finals. As cool as you like, Matt Waters has stuck it in. But I think you could see, and it upset Aberdeen that did that decision. And, and for 10 minutes, they looked as if they were very, very rattled. But, um, you know, it's a decision. The referee, to be, to be totally honest, hasn't impressed me at all today, Jimmy. I no. think it's been very... Nervy. I mean, the Saint mentioned that during the game he started sure. a bit picky. Jock, Br uh, Jock Brown was critical of the referee there, certainly, Andy. Yeah. But then, obviously, another tremendous moment came up when Mo Johnson had that terrific shot, which came off the crossbar. Yeah. I mean, he has had a terrific first half, hasn't yeah. he? Well, Coyce does, does ever so well here and turns out at least two or three times, lays it off there. Morris must think that's going in. And ca cannons off the crossbar. And chance for Gary Stevens well blocked. But I mean that was a great move. I mean the, the two the two front men for Rangers have worked tremendously hard and it's full credit to the back to Aberdeen that they've kept them under the Terrific shackles. first half. Join us again for the second half in just a few moments. Welcome back to Hampden Park. 1-1, one, one, of course, a half-time score. Andy, the last chance of the first half fell to Rangers, but if you could call it a chance, I mean, a terrific strike from Gary Stevens, wasn't it? Tremendous. It must have been all of 30 yards. He's got his head down, he's sort of love that. I mean, look where it's bounced back out. It's Terry Bitch has had to leap about six feet in the air at the 18-yard line. <laughs> but that, to beat Theo Snelgers, who's a big so boy, hey? who's a huge lad from that range, it must have been a hell of a shot. OK, I mean, the big question, how do you see it going in the second half? I think it would be much the same. I mean, I think Rangers have, have dominated in general, but Aberdeen, I'm sure, have decided that they'll soak up as much pressure as they can because that's a strength in defence. And they'll look to catch Rangers on the break with the pace of Jim Bett, Paul Mason and the young lad Jess. I'm sure it'll be more of the same, and if we have more of the same excitement, we'll all be well happy. OK, Andy, well, let's now go to, to Ian St John, who's up in the commentary position with Jock Brown. Ian, your impressions of the, the first half there? Well, I thoroughly enjoyed it, Jim. Uh, after a sort of, you know, edgy tip, first ten minutes, which uh, is always the case anyway, both teams sort of just fencing a little bit. But the game warmed up. I thought there was lots of incidents to, to discuss, obviously. The penalty kick, I'm glad to hear that, that Andy agrees with us. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he will get some of the hate mail as well. Uh, but I, I, I think I'm looking forward to a very good second half because I think the game's so evenly balanced. Uh, not just because it's 1-1. I think in terms of the ability of both sides, it's very evenly balanced. And to tell you the truth, I wouldn't like to see at this stage uh, who would win this one. <laughs> OK, with the teams coming out onto the park now, it's time to rejoin match commentator Jock Brown. Thank you, Jim. Yes, the Aberdeen team out first, and the Rangers players now arriving. Looking closely around the sets of players, you see the damage done in the first half to Richard Goff has been patched up in half-time. They clearly had to protect that forehead injury, and that certainly has now been cushioned. He's concerned perhaps now about the sun, which is now coming over the covered terracing behind the goal, and... 
that may cause some problems for defenders and goalkeepers alike. No changes though in either lineup. The Aberdeen side have in reserve Willem van der Aert and Brian Irvin, and Rangers have Ian McCall and John Brown. And there's one of the most controversial figures of the first half, the referee George Smith coming out to start the second half. They've missed three bookings to Robert Connor and Alec McLeish of Aberdeen and to Mark Walter of Rangers in the first half. So they'll have to be careful. So check of the watch and the match is back underway. So McCoist going forward for Rangers. Here's Trevor Stephen and Wilkins. Stevens looking for McCoy. in goes David Robertson and there's some space for Aberdeen to exploit with Ian Jess trying the pass towards Charlie Nicholas and the referee has given a free kick for obstruction on Nicholas Barry Stevens shielding his eyes against the sun very awkward sun for the moment for the defenders in fact it's not in the goal mouth area quite so much so the goalkeepers may escape the worst of it Chris Woods in particular. Here's Brian Grant and now uh, McKimmy. McKay shots it on. Certainly not being left to his own devices by Chris Woods. Would have told him to play the ball to safety. So a throw it is to Aberdeen. Mason turning away from Monroe, but guilty of a push to win that advantage. So a free kick is given to Rangers right on the goal line. Well, Johnston worked tirelessly throughout that first half and no doubt do exactly the same again in the second period. Came very close to a goal, hitting the junction of the bar and the post in the first half. Johnston to Walters. Good tackle that by McKimmy, that's Monroe. High ball beats McLeish and McCoy is trying to set it up for Walters. <laughs> Nicholas trying to hold off. But sure, he's won the ball from Fergus, but every way play on. Rangers look for a free kick. There's Connor. David Robertson sprints past him. Oh, that comes inside using Grant. A good ball finds Mason. Coming in from the right is Jim Bett. This is great play from Aberdeen. And fine goalkeeping by Woods. He kept the ball in play, preventing a corner kick. Disappointing finish to that splendid move there from Jim Bett. He's a tremendous move. Uh, Marvellous play. A lovely ball by Mason. Actually, I thought Jim Bett had to knock the ball square there rather than have a go himself. Perhaps regrets the first touch. It wasn't quite what he intended, I don't think. That's header. Connor fighting hard. There's Nicholas releasing Mason. Woods again changing his mind. There's Mason. Couldn't pull the ball back across the face of the goal. Ian Jess hoping for an accurate cross. And again, the left flank of the range of defence opened up for Paul Mason. Well, he really did well, Paul Mason, getting there. And, uh, I mean, he was racing at pace. It was a very difficult ball to turn back. But he tried to do it. As you can see, it was almost getting to the byline. Tried to turn it back and uh, just over the crossbar. But, uh, you know, always a threat in the match now, Paul Mason. His confidence must be high, of course, since that goal. There's Jess, screening in and turning well. Well tackled, though, by Stevens. There's Butcher. McCoy moved well to find space. Now Walters. Rangers pushing players forward. Now they support this attack. Walters taking on McKimmy. Here's Trevor Steven. Too much pace on the ball. Across the face of the goal, Steven couldn't keep it in. Timmy inviting Walters to go on the outside, he checked inside, then angled that across, and just too far ahead of Trevor Stephen. Breaks for Grant. Jess stands on the ball, but it's picked up there by Brian Grant. 
Here's Nicholas helping it on to Mason, and that'll come off and roll for the corner. So Aberdeen certainly starting the second half in impressive fashion. Jim Bett, a key figure in the middle of their build-up. Leash now comes forward. So once again, every Rangers player inside his own box. Connor looping it in. Up goes David Robertson. It's back towards Grant, and the ball took too long to come down to the right height to strike it. Grant snatching at that and sending it well over the bar. So the wind has been swirling in gusts around the stadium. Now it's behind Aberdeen for the moment. It certainly helps their shooting chances around the box. McLeish playing it forward. Then goes Butcher. Ferguson to Wilkins. Well, that was intended, I think, by Mark Walters. Neat play again from Mason. And from Jess, well tackled by Butcher, here's Jim Bett, the great chance for the cross, trying to be accurate, there goes Connor, back it goes to McKimmy, back with Mason, well he'll regret that all right, he took that on his left foot, it was an awkwardly spinning ball, which he fails to control here, it was Ian Jess trading into the box, well tackled by Butcher, a lot of space now for Jim Bett, so he plays this across, Connor attacks the ball well, it's back to McKimmy. His shot is stopped there, it breaks for Paul Mason. And the shot, well covered by Woods. Yeah, I'm afraid he, he wasn't able to get enough pace on the ball, uh, Mason, there, because it was on his left foot. I don't know if that's his good one. Just had a swing at him, a bobble two or three times. But uh, again, the goalkeeper had to be quick to get across. Good header that by Monroe, well, back to his goalkeeper. Jim Bett is coming in behind him. There's been some reorganisation in the Aberdeen ranks. They're using Bett on the right now. Mason has joined Grant in the middle of the midfield. Well, that's only been a temporary measure, though, because Jim Bett has now had a chat with Paul Mason and they've switched back to their starting positions. And roll with the pass back again. Aberdeen at times are trying to play that ball over the top of uh, Terry Butcher. I think they feel that maybe if they got him turning, you know, it's a bit of a weakness for him. But uh, up to now, the big fella's handled it well. Joyce header on. Here's Johnston. Stephen playing it in. Gary Miller had to be quick. Here's Gary Stevens. Well, one there by McKimmy is back with the Walters. And all ricocheting between bodies inside the penalty area, some faint appeals from the Rangers fans for a penalty. But Aberdeen survive. And down goes McKimmy, caught late by Wilkins. Wilkins indicating that McKimmy made a lot of that. The referee will have a word with him. Well, Wilkins certainly appeared to catch McKimmy, all right, but... Kimmy now, I think, is being spoken to for being a little bit overdramatic in the fall. And there's Bet. Wins the throw. Very few players in the country any better at running with the ball with their feet at pace than Jim Bet. He's the most influential of the midfield players, I think, this afternoon, Jim Bet. You know, having a big impact in this match. Mason stopped by Monroe. So it remains tied up this match at one goal apiece. Remember, there has to be a winner this afternoon. Extra time and penalties if required. There's the corner kick to Aberdeen. The Aberdeen fans offering lots of encouragement now. Aberdeen playing towards their fans on the East Terracing. Police looking for his second goal of the season. He scored against Celtic in a league match at Pataudry. And for an open double now. Here's Goff going up with that head bandage. David Robertson trying to get the ball across. It had gone over. The goal kick's been given.
Loose with a header. There's Stevens. David Roberts will have to play this. Will Johnston ensuring that. Stevens with a header to Walters. He's crossed over to the right and he's carried the ball over for a throw. And ten minutes into the second half now. Rangers one, Aberdeen one. Aberdeen taking the lead in 22 minutes to Paul Mason and Rangers equalising in 35 minutes from the penalty spot. Not Roberts. There's Charlie Nicholas. Opening play out, here's Mason, McKimmy sprinting through. Here to be impeded there, down he goes in the clash with Ferguson. Looking hopefully toward the referee and Willie Miller and Alec McLeish now going toward the referee also. Clearly trying to express the view that that was as good an award as was given against them in the first half. I thought the infringement there, Jock, was uh, in the first place outside the box uh, when Monroe sort of just balked his, his run there. I don't think it was a foul the second time. This is Connor. He's been allowed to turn. That's a bad ball. Here's trouble for Aberdeen as Walters breaks. Johnston on the right, McCoyst in the middle. Johnston looking up, trying to measure the cross. The choice was there. The ball was half blocked there by David Robertson coming across, I reckon. The sting came out of it. Here was Johnston. Lining up the cross. David Robertson was there. It appeared to come off his arm indeed. And there was McCoy with the header without any real power. There's Walters and uh, Goff. Goff has earned some space for himself. Not too pleased with that pass. There's Connor. Back it goes to midfield to Ian Ferguson. This is Gary Stevens. Robertson steps in. Oh, that's fine play again from Ian Jess. Such a promising player. Great play. Over the cross to. McKimmy, he has Mason on his right, Nicholas through the middle, and Bet Square. Here's Mason, good effort. Back with Grant, and that was off Richard Goff, and spinning away for the corner kick, and that move was entirely inspired by Ian Jess. And here was Bet taking the pass inside from McKimmy, and Mason took over coming inside, that shot was blocked, so was Grant. But it's a corner to Aberdeen. Pulled right away by Johnston. This is Grant. Now Miller. Into Nicholas. Great chance for Charlie Nicholas. His first real glimpse of goal in the match. Well, that was the effort of a striker. Perhaps short in confidence. A great ball played by Willie Miller and good goalkeeping by Woods. Connor again with the corner. There's McLeish and Miller. Willie Miller who made contact. Couldn't get it on target. Lots of determination through these Aberdeen ranks. Just wide of the target from Willie Miller. Attacks the ball with complete determination. Well, Chris Wood's definitely the hero for the moment. I, I thought that was a great save uh, from Charlie Nichols. Too often you see goalkeepers being beaten with a ball through their legs at that, but he kept his legs close together, came out and blocked it lovely. There's Mason. Pressing it wide towards Connor. Have to lunge into that tackle on Gary Stevens, so a throw it is to Rangers. Once again, Aberdeen have made that midfield switch with Mason in the middle and Bet on the right. Hoping, I think, to use the running power of Jim Bed on the flank. Here's Nicholas. Connor towards Jess. Steven steps in. Here's McLeish running it back for Willie Miller. Remaining very calm as McCoy's pressurised him. It's a bad ball by McKimmy. Miller did well enough to force it forward. Wilkins into space for Ferguson. Over on the far side is Walters.
Here's Johnston, then it goes to Stephen. And a great save from Stelders. Brilliant build up play from Rangers, and Theo Stelders brings off perhaps the best save of the match so far. Walters puts it across, Johnston pushes it down for Stephen. And a great diving save from Stelders. Yes, Terry Butcher and the header saved well by Snelders. Scarcely a moment to breathe here at Hamden. The corner kick coming over. Butcher coming in, climbing well, nodding it down. And Snelders once again to Aberdeen's rescue. One hour gone in the Skull Cup final. Still all squared at one goal each. Here goes Bet, testing the pace of Butcher. Butcher did well, forcing Bet to hurry the cross. That does appear to be the ploy, though. He had to use Bet's pace on the right. Well, that would appear to be, and uh, as I say, he's, he's having a big impact in the game, Jim Bet. Controlled by Walters for Wilkins, and now it's Monroe. Interception made by Mason, his Bet. Holding off Monroe. Miller has Robertson breaking on the left. Good play from Robertson. Now Jess takes over. Looking for Paul Mason. Back to McKimmy. Trying to find Nicholas in the box. There's Butcher. Bet switching it again. Good play by Mason. Great play by Paul Mason. And a terrific recovery challenge made. Inside the penalty area by Stuart Munro. Connor getting back for Aberdeen. Munro still on the ground inside his own penalty area. It was a magnificent piece of defending by Munro. This was great play by Aberdeen. Bet lofting it to Mason. Look at the control here going inside Stephen. Trying a left foot shot, and it was Munro at full stretch who blocked it then to go boot around the ear. Well, Paul Mason has uh, certainly looked apart this afternoon on the big stage here at Hamden Park, his first big final, and uh, he's in an outstanding match. Good to catch Stuart Monroe accidentally there with his boots after the block had been made by the fullback. And Stuart Monroe certainly covered 10 yards very quickly indeed. You see this again, the way Mason went inside Stephen, across came Monroe, and there was the impact after the tackle was made. That was a timely tackle because I think that ball was going to bend round the right-hand side of Woods there. So no luck for Paul Mason, and Stuart Monroe is back on his feet. Yes, taking on Stevens, but not making much of that. Another by Robertson, is Goff. Boys playing it wide for Johnston. Here's Stevens. Wilkins. Good running by Stevens, and that was well read by David Robertson. Coming in to intercept and play the ball out for the throw. And Gary Stevens looking for a long throw here. Gary Butcher is in the box. Back it goes to Steven. It's blocked by Bett. Well, appeals again for handball, but clearly that played the man if it did strike it on. And this time it's Charlie Nicholas who's penalised for making a back for Richard Goff. He didn't attempt to play the ball. And you can take it from that, that Nicholas is not too pleased with the referee's decision. There's Monroe. Moving Goff at the back. Great layoff from Johnston. Here's Trevor Stephen. McCoy's breaking on the left. Setting up the chance for the shot. It came off McLeish. It'll be a corner kick to Rangers. 
ball and build up of noise from behind Pierce Nelda's goal where the Rangers fans are congregated, starts again. And goes Goff, right to that near post. Butcher hanging back on the 18-yard line. Trevor Stephen taking all these corner kicks. And Butcher looking for space. David Robertson's his marker. Up goes Miller. Shot from Ian Ferguson. That was well cut off by McKimmy. Getting the ball ahead of Walters. And Wilkins going to cross for the tackle. Now 33 years old, but playing with the enthusiasm of a teenager. Here goes Nicholas. Looking for Bet on the right. Now Mason. Here's Nicholas. Picked up by Johnston, error from Nicholas. Price comes back, this is Monroe. And Butcher. Go off to Stevens. Well, the match is not one. You've just switched on, you're one thing, a ranger in the lead, they're not. It's one each. And the Skull Cup final still hanging in the balance. With extra time, a distinct possibility. And you won't miss any of that. And the free kick goes to Aberdeen. Walters was booked in the first half. The foul on McKinney. They're operating on the Rangers right for the moment. David Robertson is waiting for Alec McLeish to find his way into the box. There goes McLeish. Reed Ferguson's header. Kimmy quickly to the ball. Willie Miller's at the back. Pressurised by Wilkins. Well, that's good play from Bett. And from Stuart Monroe. Kept his eye on the ball. It'll be a good match for that back. Connor going up with Walters, there's Goff. Walters well, appeared to use an arm there, but he to use an eye long. Played forward there by Wilkins, he's earned the throw. The challenge is made by Robertson and McCoist. There is some sign of activity on the Rangers bench below us. Looks as though we'll see Ian McCall before long. There's a throw to Rangers to be taken by Gary Stevens. Terry Butcher indicates to him to wait until he arrives at the edge of the box. McLeish and Butcher together. McLeish wins it with Steven. Up goes McCoist. Stelders in good position for that. Well, a menace in the long throw clear again. McLeish under pressure of the header. And there was McCoist nodding it on, but Stelders was there. Butcher. Ball hanging in the wind for Johnston with the layoff from McCoist. Off the ball, Johnston and McKinney have clashed. Johnston's on the ground. This move will continue without Morris Johnston. And the referee and linesman agree that that should be a goal kick. The referee now looking towards Johnston, who's on the ground. Well, there appeared to be a collision there with McKinney. Really nothing more sinister than that, and certainly no offence taken by Johnston. And there's the change being made by Rangers. The player coming off is the Rangers goal scorer from the penalty spot, Mark Walters. And he goes off to be replaced by the former Dunfermline Athletic player Ian McCall. On familiar territory here at Hamden Park, he played for Queen's Park before going to Dunfermline. He's the player who turned the match against Dundee United in the league last week. And him a place in the 13 for this afternoon's match. 
Bush for the high ball, looking for Connor. It's won well by Stevens. There's McCall, well tackled by Robertson. This is Nicholas. He looks up. A run is made there by Bet, like he's making space for Mason. Delicate little chip. One there by Ferguson inside the box to give Aberdeen the corner kick. 20 minutes of the match remaining. Still tied at one goal apiece. That stain there, that bandage on Richard Goff. Well headed away by Goff again under pressure. There goes McCoist. Down he goes, a collision with Bet. Free kick's been given. And Bet not looking too impressed. Jim Bet won a winner's medal in 1981 playing for Rangers. Now trying to do the same in Aberdeen colours. After disappointments he's had. He wasn't in the side which won in 1985. He's out through injury. There's McKimmy. Good chest clearance. McKimmy again. Looking for Nicholas. Stevens comes to meet the ball. So did David Robertson for Aberdeen. Stevens for Rangers. Ferguson has found space in midfield. Well, the hopeful ball towards McCall. David Robertson had that covered. Giving it straight back to Wilkins. Here's Johnston, now Stephen. Johnston available on the left, McCoy's on the right. There's Johnston, the great ball across, and there's Willie Miller. Well, he's been doing that for so many years, Willie Miller. He's a winner's medal for Aberdeen in 1976. He's been around a long time, and he did well here on this cross from Johnston, nodding it behind for the corner. Well, there were two winner's medals, 1976 and 1985. There's Stephen. Up goes Butcher. Johnston tried to turn that on target. Rangers keep the pressure on. It's a throw on the near side. Butcher will stay up. You feel that Rangers uh, can score from one of these uh, long balls into the box. That appears to me to really be the only danger. Here's McCall. Clever Stephen making for the byline and winning the corner off Alec McLeish. I think Terry Butcher's presence up there, uh, along with Richard Goff, is a bit unsettling. And I think they're just going to better all the aerial stuff in the, in the penalty areas. Clever Stephen on the corner. Up goes Butcher again. Ryan Grant had to play that, Stephen would have kept it in play. Back with Wilkins, Aberdeen now pushing out of the box. Great pass that from McLeish, first time to Jess. Going inside Stevens and crowded out now, Ferguson and Butcher both back. Not quite enough support there for Ian Jess when he got that pass from McLeish. Side flag is up, McCoyst out on his own up front. They're carrying the damage inflicted against Dundee United eight days ago. So Willie Miller with a free kick. Uh, instructions coming from the Aberdeen dugout. That's well won by Monroe. There's Stephen. Stephen operating on the left with McCall on the right. Tackle was made by Bett. He looks hopefully for the throw and doesn't get it. Stephen trying to hold off Mason, now using Goff at the back. Across it goes to Stevens. He has lots of space to work in. Here's Ian Ferguson. Now McCall. Johnson the layoff. Here's Stephen. Back it goes to McCall. And Connor tidying up for Aberdeen. That pass finds Ray Wilkins. Here's McCall, a chance to attack Robertson. Good goalkeeping again. Signs now that Ranger are taking a grip on the match. 
Rather than doing the free kick there as McCoy's barge is into McKimmy. There was a shot well saved by Stavis. Direct free kick indicated by the raised left arm of referee George Smith. Robert Robertson wins that. Which took it across the bows of Jess and has a what then with Chris Woods. Woods again came a few yards out but didn't come all the way. David Robertson, another long throw expert. As McLeish goes, up goes Goff. Waterman are remaining, still one each. This is Bet. Trying to find room for a cross. He'll accept the corner kick, I reckon, if he can get it. Paul Mason had to make that tackle. The Rangers will have to throw. Thompson's back killer picked up by Grant. This is Bet. Inside is Grant. Well hustled there by Wilkins. Not very good job. Not at all pleased with himself. Pins going straight out to the throw. There's Nicholas trying the ton. Couldn't get away from Butcher. And here's McLeish. Looking for Connor over there on the far side, going up with Stevens. There's Nicholas. He's away from Goff. Down he goes, and a free kick to Aberdeen. And now Nicholas still anxiously looking for that. First goal of the season, and what a day it would be to do it. Could be the winner. Perhaps too far out for a direct shot, although the breeze is helping Aberdeen. Well, they've shown a lot of invention from set pieces in recent times. And I fancy this will be no exception. The referee waving the wall back while Aberdeen discussed the free kick. Nicholas Bett and Connor involved again. Nicholas with the attempt at the chip that came off the wall for a corner kick. Well, we're at the stage in the match when it will be very difficult for either side to come back from losing one now. Tense moments, these. There's Jim Bett. Well, he'll be very disappointed with that. A wasted opportunity for Aberdeen. Trying to swirl that in under the crossbar. Leash with a foul by McCoist. There's now some activity on the Aberdeen bench. They're going to make a change, I think. Here's Willem van der Ark. But here's Nicholas. Turning in the box. This is when he's at his best. Laying it back for David Robertson on the run. Another opportunity goes a begging for Aberdeen. And the change which Aberdeen are going to make is to withdraw Brian Grant from midfield and introduce Willem van der Ark to the attack so there goes Brian Grant and this will involve some reorganisation of the Aberdeen ranks van der Ark has a word with Paul Mason I think will be dropping deeper into a right midfield Ian Jess is going across to the right side of the attack with van der Ark on the left so Aberdeen going three up front now in an attempt to win this match. Van der Ark involved straight away. There's Van der Ark again. Mason pops up inside him. Jess in his new role on the right side of the attack. Testing Stuart Munro. Good play by Jess. There's McKimmy. Nicholas teeing it up for Jim Betts. 
beautifully constructed move once again from Aberdeen. Bet was on the end of it, but it was Ian Jess who set it all up in the first place. McKimmy with the cross, but Ian Ferguson just can't quite reach. Nicholas then laid it into the path of Jim Bet, and the shot was well saved by Woods. And McCall and Stevens for Rangers, 10 minutes remaining, still one each. And McKimmy with a calm header down to Snelders. Butcher with that lusty clearance sends the ball out of play again. <laughs> Aberdeen play the ball along the back four. McLeish has it now. Here's David Robertson. And the luck. Going through the middle now, offering himself at a target for the high ball, and that's well taken by Woods. Well, Van der Aert looks to me, I mean, I haven't seen the boy play before, but he looks uh, about six feet three or four. Uh, I don't know how tall he is, yet, but uh, I would think he's got to be an asset now for any corner kicks and free kicks. The just coming again with McCall. Good running there made by McCoy. Tony Miller goes with him. Great defending by Miller. The referee's given a foul, I think, against McCoist. Well, there you are. He's given a foul against McCoist for backing into Miller. You know, so, <laughs> if you like, the penalty kick in the first half was just similar, wasn't it? Well, let's have a look at it here. Willie Miller made a good block there. The ball ran away towards the corner flag. McCoist is leading. And uh, you'll see here when they get to the ball, like, to, he sort of waits for Willie Miller to come and just leans into him. And Miller... In fact, to me, then, Miller, you know, looked as if he was pushing McCoy in the back. He has the ball looked at playing distance that time, which obviously makes a difference to everybody's view. Back it goes from McKimmy to Snelders. And Willem van der Ark, who is, in fact, six feet five inches tall, is in the attack, and... Aberdeen are hoping to capitalise on that, although most of his goals for Aberdeen have come on the ground. From there, here comes Trevor Stephen. Taking away from Bet. Now Wilkins, he had a quite a second half after being so influential in the first. That's a good pass though, finding McCall. Well, checking under that left foot. Too high for Stephen. Kimmy closes him down. Even gets the cross in. There it was Johnston under great pressure from McLeish and still he got his head to the ball. Tremendous effort that from Boris Johnston. And McKinney might not be too pleased with the ease with which Stephen got that cross in. But there was Johnston under pressure from McLeish. The header loops over the bar. I must say I've been impressed with Boris Johnston today, not just the, with his heading ability because he He's a lovely little head of the ball, but his general play has been first class. He's, he's never given the ball away the whole afternoon. Here's Wilkins. Trevor Stephen. Rangers looking as though they don't fancy any overtime this afternoon. They'd rather have the match settled within the 90 minutes. And there's McKimmy. That's an awkward one. Well, a smile on the face of Stuart McKimmy. He had complete faith in his goalkeeper. Certainly seldom misplaced that faith. A very awkward ball. There's Butcher and now McKinnon. The ball played forward, but Nicholas is onside. He has Van der Aert waiting in the middle. Here's Nicholas. And Goff came across swiftly to block the cross. And out that it was an opportunity though for Aberdeen, which they failed to exploit. Although they do have the corner kick. Blood seeping below the bandage there in the face of Richard Goff. Fish in the box. Corner's corner. Up goes McLeish. It's come all the way across to David Robertson. Well, I reckon he was trying to earn a corner kick and he made it. He got a deflection there from Ian Ferguson. So a corner kick on the far side. It'll be taken by shot this time by Bet to Jess. 
Jim Bat with a cross. There's McLeish. Now Willie Miller. Came off the face of Butcher. Kimmy on towards Miller. The ball's still in play. And then it went out. And the linesman flagging Willie Miller. Completely frustrated about that. The spin of the ball kept it in initially. And there was the ball played forward by McKimmy. Miller let that bounce. It was on the line, bouncing in with a spin. And then as he volleyed the ball forward, the linesman said it was over. So here's a bit of trouble here. McCoy and Miller clashing. The referee is going to have a word with McCoy. It looks like a booking. Willie Miller on the ground with a head knock. McLeish saying a bit too much. Remember, McLeish has been booked, so the referee really will be hard pushed to take. Less than the most severe action if he's got to do anything with McLeish, but it's McCoy who's in trouble. Well, a clash there with Willie Miller, and it was McCoy who was the culprit. The booking it is for Willie McCoy. Well, Willie Miller is back to his feet, looking rather unsteady. Well, let's see how that came about, that incident with McCoy and Miller. And let's see that perhaps in a second, but the free kick's going to be taken by McLeish. Let's stay with the action. A long ball towards Van der Ark. Connor barging into Trevor Stephen, the free kick's been given. Free kick to Rangers, the edge of their own box. Van der Ark is now being spoken to. Scarcely on the field and now requiring to be calmed down by referee Smith. There's David Robertson. Headed away by Butcher, helped in its way by Stevens. There's Connor under pressure from Wilkins and Ferguson. Bet sorted out in the middle of the field. A superb match he's had for Aberdeen. Now Nicholas easing the ball away towards Van der Ark. Back down with David Robertson. Don't have any players in the box. Chris Woods coming to claim it. And a really good, confident catch. A call three on the left for Rangers. That's for McCoy East. Well, a bad break there for McLeish, but he retrieved it well enough. Choice making a splendid run, but McLeish really is a first class centre half. Powerful header by Butcher, coming straight to David Robertson. So there goes the challenge from Miller. Butcher wins it. Good play by Butcher, he's tackled well by. Mason, ball is out of play, and a throw in the far side to Rangers. So, Gary Stevens now with a throw. Chested down by McCoy to Steven, there goes Johnston, it's great play by Johnston, fine control, now McCoy. Connor is there, there's David Robertson under pressure from McCoy. Up goes Bet and a foot up against Ian Ferguson. Well, that's how Aberdeen got the opening goal. A free kick against Ian Ferguson, lifting his foot too high, which resulted in Paul Mason's opener in 22 minutes. Equalised by Mark Walters. Penalty in 35. An extra time looming now, looking more and more likely with each passing second. Just over a minute remaining now in the 90 minutes. Back it goes from Stevens now, both sets of players, I think, very anxious about making an error in these closing seconds. Connor judging that well again, Van der Ark chasing Stevens. Held on by Steven, there's Willie Miller. Goff going up, easing the header towards Stevens. One for McCoy to chase. 
And the voice making a dramatic dive there, Willie Miller telling the referee that, but he already made up his mind. So a throw it is to Rangers rather than the free kick McCoy was playing for. There's Stephen going away from Connor, running into Betts or Mason rather, who made a fine tackle. The referee's given the free kick, and this may be the last opportunity in the 90 minutes for the match to be won. The free kick to Rangers, 25 yards out. Build on the noise of the Rangers fans, sensing the possibility of victory in the last few seconds. Now Ian Ferguson has an almighty finish in his right foot. And he may be the player to try to test Theo Snelders. Well, we've seen Ferguson's power many times before. He's going to have another goal. The wall will have to be brave. Tremendous let off for Aberdeen. Snelders couldn't hold it. The shot was so powerful. Thundering through the gap there. Snelders with his body behind him couldn't hold it, but he got help from Bandera. Well, that shows the power in the save. Bandera doing well in defence. And balls in the box again. Bandera defending. Ferguson forward. There's what Johnston. And almost the winner in the most dramatic circumstances. Right whistle. Van der Ark here heading clear, then attacking Ian Ferguson who's brave enough to head it forward. There was Johnston with a hook shot, wide of the target. Well, it's certainly bad for the nerves this time. Doesn't no matter what team you, uh, you support here this afternoon because this is a, the most exciting finishes. And a little more Johnston was what, inches away there from that. Uh, what would have been a fantastic one. Uh, the final whistle we're going to extra time don't go away we'll be right back so you rejoin us just as the toss-up has gone on out in the middle Teddy Butcher and Willie Miller sorting out who'll kick off and who'll play which way both managers have been out there with their instructions during that little break between the end of 90 minutes and the start of extra time. And uh, stamina sapping, it certainly has been in the 90 minutes to date. It's one each, remember. And 30 minutes of extra time to come, 15 minutes each way. Referee George Smith checking with his linesman. It's Rangers who will restart the match. Playing from left to right. There's Wilkins and McCall on the far side. Rangers still have John Brown available and Aberdeen still have Brian Irvin who could come on to freshen things up before the end. Here goes Mason and Nicholas back with Bet. Near side is Robertson. Bring it in towards Nicholas. Robertson keep coming forward still. David Robertson going all the way himself. Well, he finished up on his weaker foot, the right, which is unlucky for Aberdeen, but a powerful run for the youngster. Yeah, I like to see defenders jock it go and continue the attack, you know, when they play a ball to follow it in, and uh, that's exactly what Robertson did there. And in fact, ended up with a very good chance, and uh, it was a bit of a miscue, the final shot, but uh, a chance nonetheless. Brett winning the high ball. Stevens going up with Nicholas. Good challenge there by Connor. The referee's given the foul against the Aberdeen player. Put up, I think, would be the verdict. And once again, the decision goes against McCoy. That challenge with Miller. Well, the crucial one, which the referee gave Rangers way, was the one in the first half, which gave them the penalty when Willie Miller had judged to have fouled McCoy. And it certainly looked to be a very strange award. And since then, McCoy has been penalised frequently by the referee. Free kick against Willem van der Ark. Dangerous play. And it'll have to be taken again. Willem van der Ark certainly has made his presence felt since he came on late in the 90 minutes as a substitute. Replacing Brian Grant. Now Butcher will take the free kick from the correct spot. Oh, 
That's done by Stephen. Here's McCoy. A well won by McLeish. Kept his eye on the ball all the time. Back with Ray Wilkins. Did a shooting chance. Well, what the effort that from Wilkins. Well, I think he's upset about that. Yeah, normally scores from that distance there, Ray, you know. He didn't have crack it, but uh, just a shade over. Well, still savouring the one he scored against Celtic, an old fun match last season. Hasn't managed to break his duck this season so far. There's Stevens. Flish underneath that. Robertson completes the clearance. Oh, Stevens careless there, allowing Jim Bett to collect. Bett going away from Butcher. He has Ian Jess on the right. Van der Aert waits in the middle with Nicholas. And the cross, a disappointing one. Perhaps looking a touch like Weary now, young Ian Jessian. Well, he's, I think he's entitled to be. I mean, he's played flat out the whole of the, the 90 minutes. And uh, I mean, looking at him there, he just looks like a schoolboy, doesn't he? But, uh, he's had an excellent game. I mean, I'm sure his, uh, his parents will be very proud of him after this one. Working hard again, coming back to link with his midfield. There's Wilkins. Now McCall. Very talented left foot. Cross goes Miller. Here's Mason. Found it out doing well. There's Nicholas. Turning off, using Bet. That's one for Jess to chase. Beaten to the ball by Munro. But these high balls forward now from Aberdeen have much more effect with Van der Ark there. The little touches on towards Nicholas. Nicholas takes the throw short. Trying to set up Mason. Will kick the Rangers. Nicholas still looking for. An opening in front of goal. He's had one good chance in the match so far, which he drove straight at Chris Woods, who closed down the angle well. Johnson getting up well again, but no one on the other side here. It's Connor who takes over. Well, better checked out of that forward run before the pass was released. David Robertson quickly to the of trouble there but here's Wilkins and with Robertson out of position Johnston goes right into that gap Stephen is there with Trevor Stephen with a great chance from McCall brilliant move from Rangers the dummy from McCoy set up in McCall but it's Snelders who saves the day for Aberdeen well, one of the best chances of the match so far passed up by Rangers great move this Johnston going into the gap, vacated by David Robertson, then using Trevor Stephen, the first time ball, a dummy from McCoy's, a great chance from a goal, but Snelders was there. Robertson lofting it forward. Uh, Stephen underneath it, the ball goes straight to Connor. Looking up inside, looking for some movement. Still retains possession. Here's Jess trying to turn. And Rangers grouping round there to defend successfully. Here's Johnston again, favouring a right flank for Rangers. Now striding inside. Tremendous stamina, well tackled by Miller. And Paul Mason did well coming back. Miller not happy with his teammates. Yes. Both the Rangers. Marking still very tight despite these wheelie legs out there. 
David Robertson lofting it high towards Van der Aert. It's a good turn by the big fella. He took a wrap in the shin from Ian Ferguson. And Jess holding off McCall. Fighting hard with Ian Ferguson now. Turned away by Ferguson. A sandwich on Jess results in a free kick to Aberdeen. Well, he showed lots of courage as well as skill on that occasion, young Ian Jess. And the arc here, controlling it well, stepping inside. Ferguson taking one just above the ankle. High ball played in by Betts. Up goes McLeish. Van der Ark's there. There's Nicholas. Trying to turn. Van der Ark and it's punched away by Woods. Fine goalkeeping there by Chris Woods. Charlie Nicholas can scarcely believe it. He thought he'd done enough there. Look the way he finds room for himself here. The turn and stab the shot. Woods at full stretch and reacting quickly before Van der Ark can catch it. Caught my hoist. The referee has given a throw to Aberdeen. Now, for my money, that was a foul on the hoist. And no being spoken to for dissent. He complained bitterly about that decision. A lot of warning suffices. Well, I thought my hoist was fouled on that occasion. I thought I thought my hoist actually was fouled. But could have stayed his feet, decided to do a bit of an act, and if he'd carried on running, he probably would have got the ball. So it's back with Butcher to Woods. And McCoy set at the heart of all the controversy this afternoon. No question about that. Here's Trevor Stephen with Gary Stevens behind. McCoy's going there with McLeish and a bit of elbowing being done by McCoy. The linesman indicating that to the referee. You know, McCoy has been booked already and uh, he could get booked for persistent fouling, Jock, because you made a point earlier that most of the fouls at the moment uh, when Rangers attack seem to, to be around McCoy. But you're getting up well with Van der Ark. There's Mason. Oh, Jess. And the turn away from Monroe, keeping his balance well. That's one of the features of this young man's plays. So well balanced in possession. The throw to Aberdeen. McCall was unhappy about that verdict. Mason using his strength on Ferguson. Still in the first period of extra time here at Hamden. It's still one each between Rangers and Aberdeen as McKimmy hits the byline. Just challenging. There's Monroe. Dumping it clear. Robertson controls it. Sending it back in. Just holding off Monroe to allow McKimmy to come forward. There goes Van der Ark. Well, Goff did very well indeed. He went bravely with Van der Ark. Took the sting out of that effort from Van der Ark, and now the referee is holding up play to allow attention to the Rangers single defender. Good play, this. Jess making sure the ball could reach Stuart McKinney. And McKinney now sending over the cross for Van der Ark. Goff was challenging. That's why he got no part in the header. And now it's Terry Butcher who's been lectured for protesting bitterly to the referee that he didn't hold up play for treatment for Goff. As a referee, quite rightly, told the goalkeeper to kick the ball out of the park and we'll stop the game. Otherwise, it would have to have been a bounce-up. If he'd blown to stop the game, Jock, it would have been a bounce-up in the six-yard box and the Rangers players have wanted that. And the referee on that occasion clearly correct, allow Woods to play the ball out for the throw. Goff, very determined player indeed, back in his feet. A head injury sustained early in the match. That Terry Butcher headband is well. But he is a brave lad because the wound is obviously seeping and uh, he's battling away. They're going for every high ball. No taking by Robertson. There's Gary Stevens with another throw to Aberdeen with a chance for Robertson to take advantage of the height of McLeish this time, perhaps. 
So just two minutes remaining in the first period of extra time as David Robertson launches the long throw into the box. Van der Aert got a touch, there's Nicholas. It's back to Mason! 2-1 to Aberdeen. Rocky Scott on the track. And the long throw did all the damage. David Robertson launching that ball and Van der Aert gets a vital touch on. Nicholas tees it up there for Mason. And he drills home the goal, which puts Aberdeen ahead. Great head flick on, great play here from Nicholas. Mason hovering, drilling the ball past Woods, who had no chance at all. So just a couple of minutes remaining in the first period of extra time, and Rangers have to come from behind again if they're to save the match. Beautifully constructed goal here. Well, it was. Van der Aert obviously used his height, got the little flick, and Charlie, to be fair to him, held the Rangers players off, laid it back to, to Paul Mason, and, uh, you know, young Paul obviously can't believe what's happened to him. Two goals, go for a hat-trick. And Mason had good pass, which comes to nothing because there was a foul on Butcher. A free kick it is to Rangers. It's already taken, Here's Wilkins. Which just stayed up with the attack. McCall. It's shot inside there by McKinney. That's where Robertin wanted to come. David Robertson. Well, for the good header, picking out Gary Stevens. Another header must be painful for Golf at the moment. And Trevor Steven. Trying to find room for a cross. David Robertson trying to deny that. Stephen forces it back to Gary Stevens. Ian Ferguson to McCoist. Fine effort, well saved by Snelders. Well, this is good play again from Rangers. Gary Stevens takes the pass from Trevor Stephen, lights that ball in, turned away by Ferguson to McCoist. The hook shot in a turn, and that's great positioning by Snelders. Didn't quite get enough on it to get it across the face of the goal, otherwise it would have given them more problems. But a good save of the goalkeeper. Great pair of hands there, Snelders. And his positioning was immaculate also. Here's Johnston, chesting it down for Stephen. This game by no means over. And David Roberts did enough there to reflect that into the path of Snelders. So the dying seconds of the first period of extra time. Referee checking his watch. And there goes the whistle for half time. Aberdeen have taken that vital lead. And Terry Butcher throwing the ball, hitting Charles Smith, the referee, in the head. An apology offered immediately. And the referee quite content that that was by no means deliberate. So the first changing round instantly. The Aberdeen fans still delirious there behind the goal to our right. We've watched a performance full of courage and determination and packed with lots of skill. There's the goal scorer, Paul Mason. He's got two now, taking his tally for the season to eight. So Aberdeen now have a testing period of 15 minutes to survive. Do they fall back in the defence here, do you think? Well, I hope not, because uh, I don't think they should let Rangers get the ascendancy. I think if Rangers could get the ball in and around the, the Aberdeen penalty, area, they're always looking dangerous. Here's Ian Jess with Monroe. Monroe plays it out for the corner and looks very upset indeed, although I must say from here, that it lines them look to be perfectly correct. And Stuart Monroe is going to be in a spot of trouble, I think. Now, he already was warned a few minutes ago for protesting. I was lucky, in my view, not to see a yellow card. But if they saw fit to speak to him at all. Now, oh, Aberdeen looking for the goal, which would surely be the killer now. There's Connor with the corner. Charlie Nicholas with the header. No problems for Woods, and Johnston immediately makes himself available on the far side. Incredible amount of stamina, Johnston. Layoff from McCoy to Stevens. There's McCoy again. 
That's the take on Willie Miller. Still in possession. That's a good ball in. Up goes Ian McCall with McKimmy. McCall with Connor. That's a good tackle by Connor. Fine play. And also a crunching tackle by Stuart Munro on Jess. should win the race all right with Van der Ark. The big Dutchman making life difficult for Stevens. Nathan to the on, there's Connor forcing it forward. Gary Stevens. Back it goes to Butcher. Long ball thumped forward, won well by McLeish. Not content to win it, he wanted to find McKimmy also. He too was trying to play football when a much fatigue factor makes it more difficult. There's Wilkins. Goff has gone forward, there's Butcher. Goff's now at the edge of the box for Rangers. And a foul by McCall on McKinney. Picked up by the referee. Free kick to Aberdeen, and Alec McLeish, you can be sure, will be in no great hurry to take this, with Aberdeen leading by two goals to one. Looking for Van der Ark. He won it well again. Here goes Nicholas with Goff. Goff reacts well enough. Wilkins takes no chances. Leash the layoff again to Bet. Bet's in trouble. Here's J Mo Johnston. Thought about a shot. And they like to be used Wilkins on the right. Here's McCoist. And Snelder pulls off the save of the match. Quite outstanding goalkeeping from Theo Snelders. Johnston out to Wilkins. The great ball in here. McCoist and head flick on. And what a save from Snelders. Corner kick. And Aberdeen will be delighted about that in view of the effort made by McCoist. He goes standard again. Goff went down and the ball was in mid-air and some protests from the Rangers fans. Uh, Richard Goff certainly looking as though he's been through the mill. Well, what a debt to Aberdeen owed to Pierre Stelter here. Oh, he's been outstanding, but... I mean, as you can sense, the game is not over because every time Rangers get up there, they look dangerous. And if Rangers do score, I think Mo Johnson will be the heart of it because he's a man that seems to get in all the trouble. Back it goes to Butcher. A high ball favoured again. Fleish has handled these well. There's Mason. Butcher judged the bounce well. There's Johnston again. Now Stephen. Half blocked by Mason. There goes McLeish. This ball picked up by Mason. Always wants to play football in the defence. That's a great ball. Van der Ark with the legs now to test the Rangers defence. Nicholas waits in the middle. Jess arriving late. And a fine save, challenge there by Butcher giving the corner kick to Aberdeen. Butcher being reckless by Wilkins because Rangers certainly were stretched on that occasion. That's the problem with they're all out attack now. They could get caught with Aberdeen break. It was a super ball by Paul Mason over the top of Terry Butcher for Van der Ark, but give Butcher credit, you know, it's a big couple of five yards and he eventually got there. And here's Connor with the corner kick. Up goes David Robertson. Nicholas now sending it back in. Ian Ferguson's header out. This is Bet. Connor calls for the ball on the right. Take it to the corner flag, I suspect. Using Jess. Now Connor. Inviting the tackle from Monroe to win the throw for Aberdeen. Aberdeen keeping things tight, keeping the ball within the corner flag area.
So there's the Aberdeen bench, Jockey Scott and his feet with instructions, Drew Jarvie beside him. Alex Smith still in the director's box. Throw by Bet. Off winning it despite the attention of Van der Ark. Here goes McCall on the break now with Johnston. Rangers overloading now in the right with McCoy's using Stevens. Blue jersey now racing towards the penalty area. Back with Wilkins. The early ball played in. There was Robertson. Now McCall. Robertson again. Good defending by the young fullback. And indeed, it's an offside decision. It'll be a free kick to Aberdeen. No one noticed the linesman's flag on the far side raised the loft. So it'll be a free kick to Aberdeen inside their own box. The bloodstained figure of Richard Goff will play to the very last second, you can be sure of that. Stevens with the header. Butcher has stayed upfield. McLeish to Connor. Now Robertson. Looking for Van der Ark. Good ball from Stevens. Here's Ian Ferguson. Ball that goes towards Johnston. A touch on. There's McLeish. Connor nodding it back to Robertson. A disappointing clearance that. A feature of Aldean's place and they went ahead is the way they tried to keep possession. Keep play, playing passes. Bet got a vital touch, allowing Snelders to come off his line. Seven minutes remaining in extra time. Aberdeen leading by two goals to one. And it up with Goff. Nicholas goes in behind. Good control. May try this himself. Back it goes again to Mason. Down to Van der Ark. And a fine save from Woods. Well, Chris Woods emulating Theo Snelders at the other end. Tyler Nicholas here looking up, setting things up for Paul Mason. Now, I think this wasn't quite what Mason intended, but he made it into a good move eventually with a header on. Van der Ark with a shot well saved by Woods. That was sure they've tied the match up. Still very much in the melting pot. There's Connor at the corner. Up goes David Robertson. Stuart Monroe's header out. Reaches Jess. Leading back when he snatched at the shot. So in the director's box there, top right in the picture, Graham Sunnis with Walter Smith beside him. David Murray, a, few row, a couple of rows further forward. Was McLeish. Van der Ark certainly has posed problems in the air for the Rangers defence since he came on. Here's Jim Bennett. Taking the ball for a walk, inviting a call to send it out for a throw or a corner. And the decision is a Rangers throw. Well, a feature of the match I find very disappointing in this idea of taking the ball to the corner flag. Yes, I know, Joe, but it, it is understandable that uh, players are just trying to run down the clock. And, uh, you know, it's only a natural thing. It's, if you're sitting up here as a neutral, you want to see the game continuing. But uh, if you're down there as a professional, taking the ball to the corner flag and trying to waste a bit of time, it is part and parcel of the game. Not necessarily a good part. Certainly not a good part, Ian, but Aberdeen certainly will do anything they can to cling to this lead now. Here's Rangers coming forward with Ian Ferguson. Looking for the byline. Couldn't find space for the cross. He thought there was a deflection. The linesman doesn't agree. The shake of the head tells Ian Ferguson the story. Well, Ian Ferguson really has lasted well coming back after that bad injury he sustained three weeks ago. And Aberdeen will make their second substitution. Partly, I'm sure, to shore up the defence and partly to waste a few more seconds. But here come Rangers again with Stephen. Four minutes remaining, Stevens cross. David Robertson's header. Wilkins gets to it again. Here's McCoy, and David Robertson finds Trevor Stephen. It's a good ball in. There's Willie Miller. Now Mason. 
Aberdeen can't get the ball clear. Here's Bet. He's made it. The chase is on for Jess with Monroe. Like it goes to Goff. Which are staying upfield. Goss it goes to the far side. Aberdeen will make a substitution as soon as play stops. A hopeful ball towards Butcher. A good header on. Goes back with Butcher. And the offside flag is up against McCoyst, I think. Well, Butcher leading by example right to the last pitch. There's Brian Irvin. Ready to come on, I think, to replace young Ian Jess, who's given his all in the Aberdeen cause this afternoon. That's the change that's being made. But just wait for the applause here for Ian Jess. Thoroughly deserved. And Brian Irvin goes on at his power to the Aberdeen defence in these closing minutes. And they're up, up with Goff. Heather finds Stevens. Another long ball thumped forward, and there goes Snelders. And Willie Miller very upset about Morris Johnston. Well, both players having a few words to say, and clearly Miller thinks Johnston was play acting when he died, and Johnston making it clearly doesn't agree. Push for the header. Come down there by Nicholas. He has to give chase himself. Two minutes remaining. Wayne just trying to force the match to penalty kicks. There's Monroe. And Trevor Stephen. That's a fine left foot cross. Up goes Ferguson. There's Butcher. Now Johnston. And deflected for the corner kick. Johnston looking for a penalty for handball. But there's no way in which any defender could have played that deliberately. Great ball this from Stephen, pulling it back from the byline left footed. Headed by Ferguson, set up by Butcher for Johnston, and deflected for the corner. Here's Trevor Stephen. Up goes Butcher. There's Johnston, he couldn't get a touch. Terry Butcher caused all the problems there. Just look at the chance here he creates for Johnston who couldn't make contact. And it's a fine save by Snelders. Well, oh, could this be Rangers' last clear chance? Johnston so deadly normally in the six yard box. So, dear Snelders has had an outstanding match for Aberdeen this afternoon. We're into the final minute of extra time, Aberdeen leading by two goals to one, it's an Aberdeen throw again. We're back from Wilkins to Monroe and then Woods just looking the long ball forward, Butcher has stayed in the centre forward position. There it goes, Irvin gives chase, but there's Johnston down to McCall. Time the enemy for Rangers, here's Wilkins. And the cross is too long. Elvis wins it well, and it's Butcher. He was careering into the post. No damage done, forced to play. And there goes the final whistle as this replay is made. There's Neil Stelders. Rangers lose the last part of extra time. It's Aberdeen the winners by two goals to one. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Join us just as Willie Miller emerges to collect the League Cup and the Skull Cup for Aberdeen. John McKenzie, the managing director of the Arrow Brewery Company Limited, presents the Skull Cup to Willie Miller. Jack Steedman, the league president, there with his wife presenting the medals. There's Willie Miller, and for the third time he's won the League Cup. The loser twice in a row against Rangers the first time in five finals against Rangers that Aberdeen have been victorious in the League Cup final. The Skull Cup winners are Aberdeen with Alex Smith, the manager, smiling happily. It's his first trophy in charge at Aberdeen. And 
one of the major heroes coming up now, holding a trophy aloft, is Theo Snelders, who was outstanding in goal for Aberdeen. Charlie Nicholas, who played a fine role. But let's join David Livingston with Alex Smith. Alec, you've done it at last. What's your reaction? Uh, I feel tremendous. I feel great. What about the game itself? Uh, I thought it was another great game for the fans. It was well worth the money again. And it looked as if it was going to go into the Bentley shootout. Uh, but I was glad that when we scored the winner, obviously. You must have been a bit worried. Your heart must have been going there in the second half. Well, I'm quite a calm guy normally, but I felt it a wee bit in the last quarter an hour there. Uh, I'm, I'm really delighted, particularly for Willie Muller and Alec McLeish. And of course, you had some star players as well. Oh, every single one of them played really well. Theo Snelders was fantastic. Alex Smith, thanks very Thank much. Thank you very All much. The best. So the Aberdeen players now on the field for the photographs, the press photographs being taken now. And the substitutes come in, Noreen Jess and uh, Brian Grant, who were in the starting lineup and went off. They're there too. The 13 players who have won the Skull Cup for Aberdeen. Paul Mason scored both goals. That makes him joint leading goal scorer in the Skull Cup with Ali McCoy. And the award for that is a Caribbean holiday for two. So Paul Mason forced himself into contention for that. So, Jim White. Well, well done, Jock. Uh, Ian and John, Aberdeen the winners. Andy, in the end, were they winners? It was one of the end games. I think the second goal was going to be conclusive. Um, I think we all thought it was going to be a penalty shoot. Alex Smith said that as well. I think both keep goalkeepers are playing tremendously well. Theo Snell does had three or four saves that were absolutely out of this world. And to be fair to Chris Wood, so did he. And because of those two, I think everyone thought it was going to go to the penalty shootout. But that man we mentioned earlier on, before we even started the game, Paul Mason, I said he looked something special last year. And he got two goals today, and he must be feeling absolutely great right over the moon. You had said that, of course, and Ian Jess, terrific contribution to. And there we are, Aberdeen, were the winners. 2-1, they've won the score cup at last. From us, it's goodbye from Hampden Park. <laughs>